If you visited New York just once, these are the 100 foods you must try. From the legendary to hidden gems offering tasty dishes from around the world, this is your ultimate list. Wow, thank you so much. Fresh Nona Maria, oh, dreams are made of this. My absolute favorite pizza in all of New York City. You know, first and foremost, I love the story of Bleecker Street Pizza. It was opened by a retired police captain who served at Ground Zero during 9-11. And this was his grandma's recipe. Thin crust with fresh mozzarella, homemade marinara sauce, finest Parmesan, fresh basil, and Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. I think that's like the missing ingredient in a lot of pies right now in New York City. You're seeing Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese being used, which is imported from Italy and very, very expensive. Here we go. It's been too long since I've had this, actually. Mm. All of those premium ingredients together just hits different, I'm telling you. I'm not trying to compare this to your everyday New York City slice. That's its own animal, but this particular slice here, it's a specialty. It lies somewhere between the Neapolitan pizza and a regular New York slice. Holds up really well. Nice undercarriage. A lot of sauce, a lot of cheese, very saucy. You're into a saucy slice, you are gonna fall in love with the Nona Maria. Everybody behind me is ordering a Nona Maria. This is by far what they're most known for. I've had the other slices here before, all very good. But this, this is what you travel to Bleecker Street Pizza for. I think of all the places I've ever filmed, this is the spot where people are most likely to say hi. And it's really cool that a long time ago they put me on the wall of fame here. So I, I don't know if there's a bigger honor in my life than being on the wall of my favorite pizza spot. With Dominican yes. Chimito is here and I don't know, this looks straight out of Miami Beach. <laughs> yeah, I do love the neon signage. So uh, Corona here does have a pretty big Dominican community. Now, chimneys usually find on the streets at trucks. This one's special. I'm excited to see it. Yeah. Your first time. First, first chimney, time. Right? First chimney. My name is Max Pina. I'm the owner of Chimito, operating since 2022. I only started it with the chimneys. This is the only place, I believe, in Dominican Republic or in the United States that is dedicated to the elaborate the gym is, is our national Dominican sandwich. We have 10 different ones. It, it doesn't matter your nationality because the sandwich is so flavorful, it's gonna, you're gonna love it. So this is, this is a mix you said of pork and beef? Yes, yeah. otherwise you won't get the texture. Yeah. But this is the original, this is it. This is the most similar to the pan de agua. It's a Portuguese crunch in the top, or through the toast that it gets crunchy, it has to be crunchy. As a Caribbean, we like everything a little burnt. Beautiful green tomatoes that you're only gonna find it on chimitos, shredded cabbage. The main ingredients, ketchup and mayo, otherwise it won't taste the same. The mustard? Yes, it has sauce. You can tell here, it's got a nice like crunch to it. I can already feel it. Down this, I've never had this before. <laughs> you know, with a lot of burgers, it's just about the meat, but this is about the entire bite in one, getting all those flavors together, ketchup and mayo really hitting me hard up top, tasty patty at the bottom, the chorizo, half pork, half beef. Like, where has this been my whole life? <laughs> yeah, I love the whole package. I love the crunchiness you get out of that cabbage. It kind of like lightens up a little bit too, right? It's not as heavy as you might think. You know, you think mayo can be a little heavy. Not so much. And the bread, I love the bread. I love good bread on any sandwich. Basically two layers of crunch, the bread, and then you get the cabbage in there too. And then you get that green tomato, which is a good, interesting curveball there. And what's incredible is if you don't want the traditional chimi, you can get vegetarian options. Mm -hmm. They have 10 different varieties here. Max was telling us, putting it through the toaster, getting it nice and crunchy. Man, the sauces just work well together. And he was saying in the in the DR that you let all the ingredients fall into the plastic bag and then you scoop it up after with a spoon. We might have to try that after. I don't know about the spoon, I'm gonna try it with it. There's, there's gonna be some good stuff underneath. <laughs> Gonna be making a mess, that's for sure. You know, he was telling me that late night is the most popular time here. I am not surprised. Like, if you went out for the night, imagine finishing it off with this. I think that's the only time I've ever had this a bit late night. Yeah. It's probably the earliest and earliest time of day I've ever had a chimney in my life. I'm glad this is like a, a specialized place for chimneys. And it's a really cool little like hole, little hole in the wall spot. This spot has been around for so long. It's so iconic. A lot of people have grown up on this spot and after a game of basketball, come here and grab a little snack. So all the kids in the park love this place. Yes. Wow, usually the spot is like packed on the weekends. 
packed. This is actually, I think, the quietest I've ever seen it here. Yeah, really. Hi. Can we get two orders at number one? Very important. Cash only, yes. Yeah. I've been waiting for this. I mean, I think this is one of the best deals in Chinatown. 50 cents each. Now, you said this isn't even the cheapest fried no. dumpling. <laughs> not, not even by a long shot. That's why I gave you the look. <laughs> Four dollars, <laughs> pork and chive dumplings, just a, a classic. Mm. Mm, nice and crispy. I never put so much sauce in mine mm. until you did that. I love it. I love the combination of the sriracha, vinegar. Spicy and sour and savory all in one. There's a reason why people of all ages love this dumpling spot. So at some spots, the dumplings are pretty dry. This spot is actually pretty greasy and it's so much better with the sauce. It's not too doughy, it has some chives in it and a good amount of meat. Mm. I'll tell you, I think a lot of times I'm more in the mood to do a dumpling run like this than I would be for dollar pizza. I definitely go for a dumpling run over a dollar pizza run. But if, if you're a fan of like anything fried, never had a dumpling before, I think they'd be a really good spot, like your first visit in Chinatown. I think so. I love dumplings. I'm so excited for this tour. Mm. There's something cool about naming your store very simple, like dollar pizza, fried dumpling, tasty dumpling. And just like dollar pizza store, they have to mass produce, mass serve, these dumplings to make it work, and these guys are doing it. Iria Landia is changing the game here in Jackson. Oh Heights. yeah, they're the first. They changed the game in New York City tacos, period. Like, started here, now they have four trucks around the city. All right, you can tell they're serious about their tacos when they have their own bouncer. Y empezó, la idea la empezó en la casa cocinando durante varios años. Y de un día para otro dijo, pues vamos a intentarlo. Venderle a la gente, que la gente pruebe nuestros tacos. Y, y parece que fue muy, muy popular porque hemos tenido bastante audiencia. Birria from Birria Landia, often imitated, never duplicated. These were the first people to do Birria in New York City. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they opened here in 2019. They got two stars in New York Times. The same critic gave Peter Luger, the famous steakhouse, <laughs> zero stars. Now, for anyone who has never had Birria before, we've got Birria de Res. We have beef with cilantro, onion, salsa, and the consomme. Yeah. All right, you can't forget the consomme. Never, never, never. never, never. never. <laughs> the best part is dipping in the consomme by far. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, give it a good dip. Can't be shy. There we go. All right, let's take a big bite. I've been dreaming about this bite. If anyone ever asks me where's the best taco in New York City, I say right here. I cannot think of a better taco in New York City. So juicy, so delicious. Worth the trek to Queens, or in Manhattan, or in Brooklyn, wherever you are. Or the Bronx. Or the Bronx. This is next level. This is like game-changing tacos. Yeah, I agree. Best in New York City, for sure. It tastes as great as it has every single time. I love that crispy shell, the tender, juicy meat, just the right amount of spice in here. Phenomenal. You actually look in the consomme, look at the chunks of beef that you are dipping your birria into. You could eat the consomme on the side. I think I'd be very satisfied if this was all I ate. This was my meal, just the consomme itself. And if you've never had a birria taco before in New York City, find your nearest Birralandia. Like, what are you waiting for? Classic New York. This is on a lot of tourists and locals' radar. We're gonna see if it lives up to that hype right now. Let's get in there. Can I get two classic bagel and locks? I wanna do uh, everything bagel with sky and cream cheese. Okay. Gotta get the Nova. There you go. That's it. All right, we got our prize right here. Heavy bagels. We got the classic right here, $17. This may be one of New York's most expensive bagels, okay? Let's sure. try this. I love the Nova salmon smoky flavor. Different than your typical belly locks, which is a lot saltier. I love coming here. I think you can get a lot better bagel in New York. The bagel as itself is one area they could do a lot better. Flavor's great. Bagel. Mm. They don't make their bagels fresh here. This is my favorite locks, not my favorite bagel spot. Now imagine you combined Absolute Bagels or Utopia Bagels a with this Nova Salmon. A lot It'd be like a, an Avengers level bagel. You go one place to get the bagel. Yeah. You go one place to get the cream cheese. Yeah. <laughs> you go one place to get the Nova and then you put it all together in your kitchen. It won't come cheap. Like we saw some of their options in there. You can get caviar cream cheese. You could make the most expensive bagel in New York just going in there if you wanted. You want to get like old school, Jewish stuff? This is what the Lower East Side used to be like 100 years ago. They were full of places like Russ and Daughters. Yeah. And now, 
this is one of the last ones standing. That's why I think you have to come here. And it doesn't get much older than Yona Schimmel since 1910. Oh, this place hasn't changed at all. Every time I come here, like stepping into something comfortable. Yona Schimmel Knish is the first knishery that came to United States. It's the granddaddy of all knishes. So if you haven't had Yona Schimmel Knish, you really never had a knish. And what I say, it's one world, one taste, one knish. I'll do uh, one potato, the old school. Greg, what are you thinking? Oh man, um, one spinach. Okay. And we've got 14 different flavors. You're feeling adventurous. Oh, we got mustard too? Perfect, thank you so much. Sure. Now, if you've never had a knish before, a knish consists primarily of potato, onion, and seasoning filling wrapped with a thin layer of dough that is baked, never fried, popularized in North America by Jewish immigrants. The great thing about a place like Yona Shimo is you're coming to the inventor of the knish, one of the oldest remaining eateries in all of New York City. That's tough to find anywhere. Oh yeah, I mean, these are the places you really have to cherish and treasure when you come and visit and as a local and a native like myself. Here we go. Words cannot describe how satisfying and comforting a bite of a fresh knish from Yona Schimmel is. <laughs> oh man, so good. I love that it's very light on the outside and so soft, mushy inside. I got mine with spinach. I like it. there's a little bit of a earthiness to it and a little extra vegetable, why not? I'm actually a fan of the classic potato one. They have so many different flavors that you can go with. I do want to grab some mustard though. That's kind of a must here. Don't forget the spicy brown mustard. Now a little mustard added. Mm. So pillowy. And this is the same kind of mustard that you would put on a hot dog. Never had a bad experience here. Came here like 10 years ago for the first time on a food tour. Never forgot it. Best condition I ever had. Eileen's special cheesecake. Hi. How can I help? Two of the classic planes. You know, they've been open almost 50 years for a reason. They were telling me in there that they actually designed these special cheesecakes to be this small for all the tour groups from around the world and tourists that come in. I mean, I'm always singing their praises as well. This is the plain, a lot of cream cheese, graham cracker crust, makes it a little more unique. Hello, <laughs> mm, So light, so creamy. I'm not the biggest cheesecake fan, but for Eileen's, I always make an exception. And I just don't think you have to make a special trip to eat cheesecake if you're eating some huge meal and then you gotta force yourself to have dessert. This is perfect because you're right on the edge of Soho here, so you're probably gonna be in the area at some point, grab a quick dessert on the go, and try New York's most famous dessert choice, cheesecake. They bake so many of these, so they're so busy, they're always getting a fresh piece. Tart-sized cheesecake, perfect for uh, on the go, or you could eat it inside. There's nothing like Utopia bagels. My name is Jesse Spellman, I'm the co-owner at Utopia Bagels. We go through about 70 to 100,000 bagels a week, so that comes out to about 10 to 14,000 bagels a day all hand rolled. Utopia Bagels opened in uh, 1981, so we don't teach any timers or anything like that. It's all about feel and eye. So once they get on the seed boards, then we seed the top of them. So the boards go in the oven, and they get one rotation around this oven, and then we flip them off of the boards onto the slate. That's how they get the crispy bottoms. The bag of bagels adventure is about to begin. I got an everything with scallion cream cheese. Got egg everything, so basically the same, but with the egg bagel, everything seasoning. Not easy to find these, my favorite bagel here to get. All right, let's give, let's give us a go. Mm. And maybe the crispiest exterior of a bagel I've ever tried in my life. That's a major compliment. Mm -hmm. Got a really nice chew to it. Very light, like it's, it's really not gonna be such a gut bomb like some other bagel shops can be. Can't say I've ever had a bagel quite like this one, and this has got to be one of the best bagels I've ever had in my entire life. This is like the ultimate breakfast sandwich right here. You got hash browns, sausage, egg, cheese, avocado, a little bit of chipotle mayo on there too, and a Asiago bagel. Never really gotten anything here that's so involved like this. You guys stick with the classics. I'm excited to try it. really a whole breakfast in one sandwich. 
And I love it, just the bagel itself is not so heavy, just like we've been stressing so far about it. So it really is a great balance of the filling and the bagel. This is the worth it. We've got cream cheese, lox, tomatoes, onions, and capers on sesame bagel. You know, for a spot so well known for their bagels, their lox are actually really, really good, but not overly salty. Obviously, you have an amazing bagel to go with it. The worth it is absolutely worth it. They have these incredible bagels, and then you can order all sorts of varieties for lunch or even for dinner. Donovan's, and they're synonymous with their burger, right? Absolutely, they are very famous for their burger. All right, I'm hungry, I gotta check this burger out. Let's do it. I feel like we're stepping back in time. Uh, Joe Donovan and his father took over in uh, 1966. I mean, it's a really big part of the community. This is the place everybody wants to meet and hang out. How, how did the burger get so famous, I'm curious? That's Joe Donovan. He has a burger, which is, you know, chopped meat, which he puts uh, cuts of steak into, and we never changed it, you know, we just kept going, and uh, it's still, being raved as one of the best burgers you could get in the city. So this is our famous Donovan's handcrafted burger, eight ounce burger, ground beef, chuck steak, and brisket, and other ingredients which are gonna keep to our, ourselves. If you think it's excruciating waiting for your food sitting at a table, imagine watching it being made and all those smells. Oh man. Being ranked one of the best burgers in New York, I'm amazed at the simplicity of this. I am too, I, I love places like this, and I've had this burger several times, it's been a little while, but Definitely comes to mind when I think of some of the best burgers in Queens is always high on that list. All right, let's, let's take a bite. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm. Wow. Wow is the right word. This is a patty forward burger. It's so juicy, so moist. Like that first bite, I didn't notice anything else but the beef there. And that's exactly what you're looking for out of a burger like this. Absolutely, like the juiciness of that burger is really top notch. Um, you get a little bit of saltiness from the cheese on both layers. He, do, he does put it on both sides of the bun. But I really like just the star of the show is the patty. You know, they have other varieties here. You can get bacon, you can get egg, you can avocado if you like, but I think the cheeseburger is the way to go just for how juicy and just high quality the patty is. This is one of those burgers I think you could eat this too quickly if you're not careful. I'm already on my way, I gotta chill out. <laughs> Look at all the juices mm -hmm. from the patty that I've already seeped out. I'm gonna use like a dipping for my fries. A little ketchup. A little burger juice. Mm, don't sleep on the steak fries either. No. It's real potato juice. It's not, these are not frozen. These are definitely handmade. And that's the thing what I really appreciate about Donovan's. I've been here before. It's a lot bigger than I expected too. It is, it's huge. Mm. It's like two hockey pucks or something. It's yeah. Like... <laughs> if this was a ratings channel, which we are not, I think I'd give us a 10 out of 10. Jin Jang Cafe, and from the outside, it just looks like your ordinary cafe, but that couldn't be further from the truth, right? Yeah, this is a local favorite. Uh, a lot of people come here to do some work, but they got excellent food here. They got great African teas, great African uh, cuisine, sandwiches, wraps, bowls, soups, and so forth. I think we should check it out. Let's do it. Okay. We started the company back in 2015, and the whole idea behind it is to make food and beverage products that are based on traditional African recipes. A lot of ingredients come from the continent, but no products or brands have been built around celebrating the people, the culture of the continent. We have unique um, bowls and salads and wraps and snacks that are all inspired by um, dishes that we grew up on. Superstar on that is probably the jollof rice. Rice cooked in a rich tomato stew, fried plantains, roasted veggies, root vegetables, potatoes, carrots, sweet potatoes actually, julienne, um, cabbage and carrots, stuffed in a little bit of a vinaigrette. The chicken is actually cooked in the stew itself. Chutney on top. What do you think? This is the meal right here. Man. I like the, the spices, how they combine in here. I like how the chicken you said is also cooked right in the stew as well. It's so juicy and moist. I've not had enough West African food in my life. I need to change that. There's a version of it in every county you go to that. We, we actually have moms, if you will, right? Pair them up with our, with our, with our chef. But we started with mom's recipe yeah. and sort of played around with it. Do you have a lot of people that come in here and say this reminds them of home? Oh, all the time. All the time. It's like the wow. best compliment you can pay. Uh, cassava fries. Cassava, we boil, deep, deep fry them, uh, and we garnish it with cilantro, parsley, some fresh onions, uh, salt and pepper, and some uh, lemon juice, and toss it all up. Oh, it's not your ordinary fry. No, that's good stuff. <laughs> you try it with the ketchup. Mm. Definitely never had fries like this before. Yeah? No, never. This is hidden gem for sure. Yes, thank yes, you. I agree, I agree. Yeah, thank you. I mean, chicken and shrimp for the stock. Okay. Um, and then flavored with the Malaysian curry, and then topped with shrimp and fish balls. Um, and the bowl comes with egg noodles and rice. Let's do it. Full laksa. Um, it comes with the egg noodles and the rice noodles, and then it goes in our 
noodle warmers to just like warm up. So it comes with Chinese long beans, which is almost like a string bean, but a little hardier. And then shrimps, which our shrimps are also poached in our curry soup. It's a Malaysian fish ball. This, this one we're using is a white uh, one, not fried, just uh, boiled. So we just warm it again in here. So this is our laksa soup. You'll see the tofu puffs are in here. Um, that also goes in the bowl, but we let it soak in the soup so then like it really absorbs the flavor of the laksa. But the vegetarian ones are uh, shiitake mushrooms for the stock with some miso and then the Malaysian curry in there. The full portion, um, the bean sprouts are at the bottom and then we put the noodles over it. Then the toppings on top. Okay, ready for soup? Now this is where we finish the bowl. So it goes with a some cilantro on top, slice of lime. Squeeze it on before you enjoy the bowl. A half a hard boiled egg. Finish it off, it's uh, fried shallots. Do have a side of hot sauce if you guys like spicy. It's Mama Lamb's uh, hot sauce. We're both trying laksa for the first time. Cheers. Cheers to it. This is really good. The rice noodles are very thin and what hits you is really that broth and the Malaysian curry. I can really taste that coconut milk as well, which gives it just that little bit of extra thing that you need in here. She was telling us about Malaysian food in general, and I've only had it a handful of times. Indian influences, Indian spices, but then you have the Southeast Asian influence going on, with like the coconut milk and the flavor, and it's spicy, like in the best possible way. You know, I'm normally not a tofu fan, but covered in that broth, so good. Probably the best Malaysian curry I've had in a while. It's not overly her um, heavy. I'm actually surprised that they don't have a brick and mortar or a food truck yet. They were telling me that they're looking into it. Mm. I had a big like bunch of bean sprouts in here and they're just so crunchy and it hit that egg. I don't think there's anything in this dish that they did wrong. What, what vibes do you get? It's very lively diner, but also a little Asian fusion vibe. That looks like a Burger. We got the Chinatown egg and cheese sandwich with bacon, 17 bucks. Soft scrambled eggs, American cheese, a hash brown patty served on a sesame scallion milk bun. I don't know if I'd wait two hours. Make a reservation if you want to come here. All right, let's take a bite and we'll, we'll discuss what we got going on here. Ready? Let's go. Let's do it. Mm. This is just bringing like different textures and flavors to a mix that you don't think about with a bodega bacon, egg, and cheese, like how soft the milk bun is. The hash brown on top, which, you know, this is different. There was no hash brown on anything else. Even the eggs being super fluffy, this is incredible. I know it's a bad comparison, but I do like putting hash brown in my McDonald's McGriddle. So this kind of makes me think of it a little bit. This is sound crazy. Do you think this is too decadent for bacon, egg, and cheese? Yes and no. I wouldn't mind it at all, actually. <laughs> if I'm waiting two hours inside at this diner, I think I would order this. And the scallion taste is actually Pretty pungent, pretty strong, in a good way. Yeah, you know, it's, it's all super balanced. Yeah. And apparently, they pick up these milk buns fresh every single day from a Chinatown bakery. Yeah. Usually, sweetness wouldn't be a part of your bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich, but the bun itself has a hint of sweetness to it, which yeah. is really good. It's more popular for brunch to order avocado toast. I think this is a unique way to bring bacon, egg, and cheese back into the picture at a diner. Yeah. I wouldn't be too proud of myself eating an avocado toast in the public, but this one, you could be eating it proudly. Nobody wants to watch that video. We're not making that video. <laughs> That's too healthy for this channel. <laughs> I just feel like they've ele they've elevated most of the basic ingredients. Just Turned, drop a dollar worth of egg. I just dropped a dollar's worth of egg right there. This is delicious. I love the hash browns. This is delicious. Eggs are so fluffy. This is really good. Would you pay 17 bucks for it though? Is it that good? I would pay for it, but I'd never wait two hours for it. So yes, I would definitely pay for this inside. Oh, we're blessed. New York's the best. I love New York. I have never tried a Xiaobing before. Sangge, Sangge, this good. And Sangge, Hong Dong Bing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so Sao Bing, what it directly translates to, Sao means like roasted, right? And Bing means flatbread. You know, people do it in different ways. This is essentially a roasted or baked. Salting. And we're showing you the sweet version first. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna go backwards. We're gonna start with dessert. So this actually this type I've never had because she said there's sticky rice in here. Okay. All right. Let's, yeah. let's discover this. Mm. By the looks of this, I was actually expecting this to be a lot sweeter 
and like more sugary mm -hmm. than it is. It's really interesting. It's crispy on the outside, tender on the inside, like nothing I've really ever had before. We also ordered the red bean paste filling. For people that have had that, it's actually kind of similar, but imagine a, a rice texture that's sticky. Love that about flushing. So many small little family-owned businesses like that. Yeah, and it's completely homegrown, and that's I think that's what makes it special, right? That's what keeps this community going. so hot that we have to like double wrap the bottom to even hold it. And I was joking off camera, this is like a, I don't know, Chinese calzone yeah. stuffed on the interior. We've got lamb cumin. All right, let's, let's Cheers. try this. I actually didn't even get any of the lamb in my first bite and I'm happy about that because now we're letting it air out a little bit. The little onions on top of the lamb, cumin flavors, excellent. This is so interesting, a Xiao Bing, because you know, I'm, I'm fine with meat being stuffed into something. I'm used to that, but all the juices, that's what's keeping this yeah. piping hot. You know, what's amazing about this is really, I think, again, the texture, the fact that there's soup inside, there's really meaty filling yeah. in there, but then you get this flakiness on the outside. I mean, this is worth burning your hand for. I've already <laughs> done it five times since we've been here, but... Flushing Queens, you can find like almost every type of Chinese food imaginable. Ooh, Xiao Bing's. Never eaten anything quite like this in the combinations. I mean, I love oxtail, love mac and cheese, grew up eating patties, but combined together, sounds crazy. Let's see what the hype's all about. Let's do an oxtail mac patty, goat curry mac patty, jerk chicken mac patty. All right, I got you, man. My uncle and auntie make these fresh patties for us, deliver them every day. This is gonna be like the oxtail right here. We strut it so there's no bones. Every bite is like you're taking a bite of a whole dinner. Personally, the goat is way better than this one, but this is the one that went viral because everybody loves oxtail. And these are our three best patties right here to me. Our goat, our jerk, and our oxtail. We've got a beef patty with cheese, and we've got mac and cheese on top, oxtail, extra gravy surrounded by cocoa bread. This is an insane hybrid here. And the patty is homemade too, which I think really is gonna add an interesting touch to it. Let's do this. Mm. So you got the oxtail on top, a little spicy, and all the juices just soaked in with the cocoa bread. This sandwich is honestly just bragging. This is a messy, delicious sandwich. The soft cocoa bread, the fresh patty, freshly made patty, mac and cheese is a, adds that little extra, but oof, the oxtail is really the star. I think the cocoa bread really brings it all together. That soft cocoa bread is amazing. I always love eating patties, either it's at home or at the pizza shops, where you would get it, they would cut it open, you would add mozzarella cheese if you like, pepperoni, that's what the owner, he said he likes it that way best. I think it's just taking it to a whole nother level here with the West Indian flavors. Because I really wanted to open up a restaurant so people could taste my dad's food. I first originally made the mac patty one night after work. And when I cut it open, it looked so appealing. And I told my sister, I'm like, post this on the business page and let's see if people are gonna come for it. The next day I opened, a girl walked in and she bought a mac patty. And then after that, a bunch of influencers came to start trying the original mac patty. And one day a girl came in here and she asked for oxtail gravy on it. And then the guy behind her was like, hey, can you do that too for mine? And I was like, yeah, we got something here. You know, I, I always tell people, try pizza when you first get to the city. I say try that deli first. That would be a really cool move. Try something different, you know? I don't know how it's taken me so long to get to the Sturgeon King. Barney Greengrass, I'm find it here. You have a Sturgeon platter, eggs and onions. What kind of bagel? Mm, plain's good. Plain toasted? Yeah, please. How big is the Sturgeon Nova Scotia salmon? Is it good for two? Yeah, the platters are all for two. Oh, beautiful. All right, I want to order what Bourdain did. All right, two bagels with that, what kind? We'll do plain toasted. Both plain? Yeah. We did the mixed platter here of both, because I want to try both. and. We're gonna eat it just like Bourdain did. Got the sturgeon. Look how, uh, how flaky this sturgeon is. It's just falling apart on my fork. Mm. Now I understand why Bourdain liked this so much. It doesn't have as strong of a flavor as the Nova. And as he described it, it has a bit of like a buttery taste to it. A lot milder, but Super, super good. This is a, a smoked fish for someone that isn't into every type of smoked fish. Mm. And that combination of the cream cheese, toasted bagel, balances out everything just right. You can even see the little fatty parts on the sturgeon just adding a little 
bit of extra flavor. Don't know what an appetizing store is. These are very popular, particularly in the Lower East Side of Manhattan at the turn of the 20th century where Jewish immigrants would congregate to get all sorts of fresh goods like smoked fish. And these stores are so rare today that if you want to get really good sturgeon, really good Nova Scotia salmon, you pretty much have to come to a spot like this. Cash only on weekends or personal checks. You know, I remember my mom used to walk around with her checkbook when I was a kid. There's still people up here who do that. One thing that's different since Bourdain filmed here over 20 years ago is the outdoor dining everywhere, especially these little outdoor stations with the rooftops. This is all post-COVID. So actually, more chances to get a seat at Barney Greengrass on a busy weekend. Going to Barney Greengrass, this is a destination spot. You could just pop in and get a bagel to go. You don't have to do the whole sit-down service. Highly recommend this. Bourdain, you had some good taste. 99 cent fresh pizza located just a block from Grand Central is my absolute favorite. They just had a line out the door and I think the locals know what's up here. Let's get two slices. So fast. A lot more efficient than going to the DMV, I'll tell you. Two slices, two dollars. Nothing fancy here. There's a certain consistency to spots like this where you don't have like super high expectations for the best slice of your life. But for a dollar, are you really complaining? Not crispy enough for what it is. I've always wondered how long will these places stay in business? They've been around since the 90s. And with everything else in this city getting so expensive, the fact you can still get a slice for a buck shocks a lot of people who aren't from New York. Just like I would never compare a New York slice to a Neapolitan pizza, I wouldn't compare a dollar slice to your average New York slice. These serve a utility. To me, this is like a snack food. They're open from 9.30 in the morning until five o'clock in the morning. I saw a bunch of delivery drivers popping up on their bikes and I thought, how do you order dollar pizza? And then I realized that's where they were eating in between their deliveries. I saw a mom on the subway with two young girls and dollar pizza is pretty easy to spot. And she was giving them each a slice for a snack after school. Having kids here, I know it's expensive. Having options like this, like whatever your income level is, whatever your budget is, if you're visiting from overseas, you're not gonna find dollar pizza in any other city in the US. And it's become such a part of New York culture. But if you're by Grand Central, about to take the train home, I think this is a great value for a dollar. They're actually owned by immigrants from Bangladesh. They're doing the community a real service with this pizza, I'm telling you. Welcome to No One, number one burger in New York City. Come on in, come on in fresh patties. So it's really a blend of using some nostalgic ingredients with some high quality ingredients. Like we use a, a great blend of, of meat. We smash it. It's a technique that really matters. Uh, season it with our special umami seasoning. What's in it? I can't tell you. There's our sesame buns. We get custom made sesame seeded buns from a local bakery. Look how soft and airy. Look at all those air pockets. You get a nice sear on one side. And while the other side is cooking, we're gonna start to layer some cheese over the top. So now, we're gonna give it a quick steam just to melt the cheese over the top. So I love American cheese because it just melts right into the cracks and crevice of the burger patty. Every nook and cranny, that's what I really love. And we sear every burger patty to order. Nice and toasted. This is our kimchi special sauce. We're gonna do some raw onion on the bottom. Add some freshness and a little bite. This is our homemade roasted kimchi, my mom's recipe. So we make this here. We make about 100 pounds of Napa cabbage a week. And then on top, we're gonna add some of our homemade house pickles. So how can I take Korean traditional flavors and incorporate that into American staple as a burger? So the bun is a vehicle for a Korean barbecue in my mind. All right, ready? Let's take a bite. Something that Jay said in there is really standing out to me. These two buns here are just holding together that Korean barbecue experience. And as soon as I tasted the kimchi and the kimchi sauce with the moist patties and the cheese, oh, flavor explosion off the charts. This has to be the best burger I ever had. Like, right away you bite into it, that hilly soft bun. You got that pack full of like kimchi. I don't know what to say about this, this thing is Perfection, really. Kim cheese I've had in the past have been much spicier than this one, but I think this is the perfect temperature because if it was too spicy, 
it might take away from the burger too much. For me, it's a 10 out of 10. They perfected it with this. I would usually pay $21 for this. Normally, I would find it very difficult to justify a $21 burger, but in, in this case, I would justify the cost. Joey's Vats Cafe, it's my son. Okay. Joey Batista. Okay. When he moved into Manhattan 11 years ago, he, they nicknamed him Joey Vats. So okay. then he, he thought it'd be a cool name for a business. Then he got sick of his job, he decided to open the, the business with my cake. And then we started doing the natas, which is Portugal's most famous pastry, pastel nata. In the middle, uh, it's a, a custard, but my son describes it perfectly. Imagine a warm creme brulee wrapped in a flaky croissant. You're gonna need two because one is not enough. I also call them love at first bite. A little cinnamon, a little powdered sugar. I have to say, uh, I loved her story and her pride in her son for opening the business. And, and uh, natas, as you heard, the most popular pastry in all of Portugal. Four bucks. I mean, I just came back from a trip from London and over there it was hard to find some cheap eats. I was in their Chinatown. I paid $5 for a custard bun that exploded all over my jacket. This can pass for a cheap eat. Mm, she was right. Whoa, love it first bite. Mm, like the creme brulee in the middle. Creme uh, brulee makes a croissant. Yeah, pretty accurate actually. Yeah, I would even say like it might be part donut too. She looked at us, I said, there's only three of us. She's like, you're gonna need more than one. She knew, she knew something yeah. there. You might even need three. Warm, gooey. I finished that in two bites. Maybe that was a little quick, but wow. Yeah, I could do it in two too, but I wanted to show the rest. A fun fact, this Portuguese pastel de nada, is actually the inspiration for the Hong Kong egg tarts or the Cantonese egg tarts that you'll see in dim sum. I don't know, I'm actually struggling to think what I like better, the, the Portuguese Hong Kong style egg tarts or the natas. Right now, I'm leaning on the natas, I don't yeah, know. This one, I, I'm leaning on the OG. I think the OG is better, man. There's something about this crust and the, the cream mm. in here. This surprised me a lot. I didn't know what to expect. So many people come here, visit here, and get everything on the menu. There's such a variety, but today we're gonna eat some soup dumplings. Love soup dumplings. We're getting the xiao long pao. Boom. Crab and pork mix. 9.95. Cash only. You could do Venmo. Oh, you could Venmo? <laughs> yeah. Cash only or Venmo. Would you consider this street food? <laughs> Usually no, but um, first time for everything. <laughs> All right. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bite a little hole on the top so that you can let the steam come out so you don't burn yourself. Now this hole, you're gonna pour some vinegar onto it. Into it, I mean. Whee! Okay, all cool down so you don't burn yourself. You pop it in your mouth. And that's how you eat a soup dumpling. Oh. I saved it, I saved it. You wanna pour the vinegar for me? Yeah. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> and just down the rest of it. Mm. And drink that soup. <laughs> That's the best part of the end right there. The soup at the end, oh, the vinegar. That's the missing link right there, that vinegar. I haven't been to every spa, but as far as soup dumplings are concerned, Deluxe Green Bow's always been my favorite. All right, John, Asian dad style. I think I missed Ming's tutorial, so. He fell asleep during Ming's tutorial. All right, show, show us how it's done one bite. Mm. <laughs> soup dumplings started from like a rural part of Shanghai and it's enjoyed by all now. Deluxe Green Bowl actually became a really popular spot because they're one of the few that actually open really late. So how late are we talking? Oh, 10 p.m. but it's pretty late for this area. Cheers. Cheers. What the hell is that? Mm. Those are crab or dumplings. You've literally created a sideshow here with your performance. <laughs> People are stopping in the street. Why are they making so We're doing it for YouTube. Oh, for fun because we enjoy it. <laughs> uh, let me pour this in. Holy s! <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Spongy's Cafe 4 9 on Google. So you'll be surprised when you meet the owner. His name is Fernando. He's actually not Chinese, he's Mexican. Hi, Fernando. Hi, Fernando. Hey. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. That's our friend John. They adopt me like part of the Asian community. So nobody say I'm um, not belong here. Someone whatever. they don't even know my name. They say, hey, amigo, how you doing? That's it. Oh. I got the chocolate chip. Let me open this up. Oh, yeah. Someone that doesn't know Chinese culture, at first glance, you would think this is a muffin. So it's actually from Hong Kong with British influence. So okay. it's like some British baking influence. Okay. In there. This is so soft. Wow. 
And you ever get one of those moments where you just know something's gonna be good before you even bite it? Wait for John to stop talking. Alright, you win. Go, go. <laughs> mm. I love the texture. Mm -hmm. It might look a little scary at first. You think like, oh, you're gonna down this whole cake without any water. You might choke on it, but it's actually really moist. This has been sitting for a little while and it still tastes pretty fresh to me too. Yeah. This is definitely one of the best snacks I've ever had in Chinatown. Everything is freshly made in the morning. Natural ingredients, no powder. You really taste it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can't take her anywhere. Four nine, live up to it. Oh, oh my yeah. Gosh. With this? This place has to be a 5.0. All right, so this is one of the best grab-and-go street foods in all of Flushing. Two fifty, <laughs> peking duck buns. Normally, you don't equate duck with being cheap. No, not at all. And it's like really just paired on the spot. Yeah. Just doing it right now. Oh, that's it. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. We got the peking duck bows uh, for two fifty. Usually with peking duck, the skin needs to be crispy, so they actually use air pressure to essentially yeah. blow air under the skin yeah. and prepare it. But they were cutting this up right there. You know, this is one of the most popular stalls in Flushing, so let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Yeah. Mm. You know what I really like? The sweet glaze on top of the duck. Mm -hmm. I love sweet, like sweeter foods like that. Mm. Essentially, like a really thick honey maltose goes on the skin, oh. and then you got hoisin sauce right here, um, giving it that sweetness. I mean, I crushed my duck, it's gone. 250, gone in two bites. Well, you're more civilized than I am. <laughs> Normally <laughs> it's not true. You know, it could be a little bit messy with some of the sauce. What I find so interesting about this is you think of duck in a lot of cuisine, let's say like a French restaurant, that's one of the more expensive items on the menu here, $2.50. And they also have the option of just straight up getting their roast duck, which is different from Peking duck, but get that over rice and it's a meal. And it's not that expensive. You can just grab this and go, like bring this home for everybody. The Astoria legend. It's been here for as long as I can remember. I grew up in Astoria, it's been here for many, very many years. Uh, Go-to spot for your classic deli sandwiches. Right. Still one bomb. Everything? Everything, everything, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. What is this? <laughs> You don't know what you're getting yourself into, huh? Look at that. Three pounds, I've been told. Oh man, dude, feel this. <laughs> each sandwich is three quarters of a pound. Basically, each piece is a sandwich. For $17, actually, I think it's a great value. We've got thinly sliced ham, turkey, roast beef, pastrami, mortadella, pepperoni, provolone cheese, American cheese, lettuce, tomato, onions, hot and sweet roasted peppers, mayo, mustard, olive oil, and vinegar. I, I lost count of how many ingredients we just had there. Crazy. Uh, let's take a bite. I can't even tell you what I just had, but it was basically like putting an entire deli into one bite, like mixing every cold cut you've ever heard of. Like the amount of meat and cheese is very heavy, but I like this. You do get that creaminess of the mayo in there. You get the crunchy peppers. It just works well. They created this before social media was really a thing. This isn't something that they just came up with because they want new people to come. They're like an established spot in Astoria. Oh yeah. So they open at five. You can either be a responsible adult going to work or you can be a degenerate after going out partying all night and get one of these and it'll hit the spot. And you said you did it last summer, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is like surprisingly satisfying right now. Actually, really this is. is the second time I've had this, and this is way better than I remember it. Best way to eat this, in my opinion, take it home, have a plate, get a fork and knife ready for the end of it. This is tough to hold together. What do you think? I think I'm just lucky I had this end piece here, so it's kind of staying together a little bit better. What makes a sandwich really special too is the bread. It's just perfectly crispy, but not too hard. It really holds it together. With this much inside, it absorbs all the sauce, all the meat and cheese really well. Which is the reason why they are the sandwich king of Astoria. They are, they're pros. Never not seen a line here and you've got a little insider trick. The point of the kiosk is to speed up the process. You could just kind of walk in and pay cash. They would never say no to you. And actually pay less with cash. How many? They sold out of the pineapple roast pork bun because we came late. Well, the great thing about Mele Wa is that the line here moves quick because everything is you know, pre-baked. So you're never waiting more than five, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. We actually been in their kitchen. They make them so fast. All the grandpas back in there. And of all the places in this video, this is the one I've been to the most. It's just the easiest to stop by with people. Yeah. All right. Let's talk more eat. Mm. This never fails. Ever. 
sweet fatty pork. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a barbecue flavor. Mm -hmm. You know, if you had to put head to head this or dollar pizza, I think I'm going for this every time. Hell yeah. I'm going for this every time. Me too. Bold statement coming. One of the best cheap eats in all New York City. Oh yeah, this should be the first image on cheap eats. And it comes with so much meat. Like Dollar Pizza doesn't have meat in there. No, we have covered other spots in the city with pork buns that give you 50% less pork than this. This street is often a tourist first spot, like a warm up spot. They warm up with this, nothing scary, very tasty, and then move on to something more challenging. That's why buns and dumplings, very easy way to start. All right, Bing Buzz, worth the wait in line or no? Especially the quick wait, yeah. You'd, you'd wait longer, I think. Oh, yeah. I would add, I would wait an extra five minutes for this. Oh. Cafe Napoli, this is the restaurant that I always send my viewers to if they say they're gonna be eating in Little Italy. I am really curious to see your opinion. Look, they even have aqua panna, which is as Italian as it gets. We're gonna do bruschetta napoletana. Bruschetta napoletana. Fettuccine Alfredo. Fettuccine Alfredo, great. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's, let's add a, a spaghetti and meatballs as well. Spaghetti and meatballs. We intentionally ordered the most Americanized Italian food you could get in Little Italy. Spaghetti and meatballs. I don't know if it gets more American than that. Maybe this is more American. Fettuccine Alfredo. What do you think of this? We are there. I think they, they are even. Literally in Italy, you can't, you can't find this on any menu. No, no. It's, it's not an Italian thing. And I find it very funny that they call this plate with an Italian name of a person, Alfredo, you know? <laughs> you could find it, potentially, in some restaurants. If you find it, it means that you are in a very touristy restaurant and they receive so many Americans that are asking for fettuccine Alfredo that they add the item to the menu for the American tourists. Mm. Mm. My meatball, tasty, good flavor. What about you? I like it so much. This is not an item on a menu in Italy, but it's something that an Italian would make at home when he doesn't want to cook. Feeling so, lazy, okay. Yeah, when you feel lazy, you don't want to cook a proper sauce for your pasta, you're just gonna throw in some butter, parmigiano reggiano cheese, and some cream, which I feel is exactly what this is. A little bit of pepper, that's it. Do you, do you think it is possible to find decent food in Little Italy? if you know where to look. You know, I'm actually very surprised, I have to say. The food here tastes quite legit. You know, the fettuccine so far are really delicious. They are cooked al dente. You can't go wrong here. They have a huge location. You can do outdoor dining. Uh, this is always my go-to, is why I took you here. La Industry Pizza, the top ranked spot in the city, located in the hipster capital of Williamsburg, Brooklyn. 4.8 stars on Google after 1,585 reviews. That's not easy to get. New Yorkers are tough critics. One pepperoni, one burrata, and one margarita. And look at how perfect this crust is, the cheese. You even have basil on here. They're Italian owned, so they've been described as this perfect hybrid of New York meets Italy. How's your pepperoni looking? It's a different style of pepperoni than what you normally see on pizza. Usually it's the flat type, but this one's like the, the cups. But I've been seeing this pop up more and more lately. Okay, burrata cheese, fresh basil, some grated, I think, mozzarella on top. Their dough looks so fresh. Always on point, especially wow. with the burrata cheese. Mm. I have no words for this pizza. I mean, it's really that good. Perfect level of cheese and tomato. Pepperoni is really, really good. Excellent. My friend Antonio always says, looking for the little air bubbles here. You know they know what they're doing. I mean, where was this pizza all my life? See all this fresh olive oil, they just drizzle here. This is what you call the New York slice, definitely. The cheese and everything, the combination of whole pizza makes you feel like you are biting it from a heaven. I give this a 5 out of 5, no 4.8s here. There's no 4.8s, a 5. Alright, 1, 2, 10, lovely. 2, go. 5, Man, we got lucky today because last time we walked through here, we couldn't even get through. It was like people on people. We're in business. It looks like a Chinese taquito. Our friends who frequent this place showed us the right way of eating this. Alright, let's pour it all in. I know John is a little worried, but it's going to be worth it. And then we're going to close this back up. And then we do a little... <laughs> and then... Voila! Oh. <laughs> 
I've, I've never seen a dumpling like this before. We're ditching the chopsticks, right? We're going in with the hands. Heck yeah. All right, this is a lot of chili oil, but I'm just gonna take a bite. Cheers. Cheers. It is so much crispier than any fried dumpling I've ever had in Chinatown here before. Exactly. They really made a name for themselves with the way they're frying it. It's super unique. The dumplings are nicely wrapped up all the way around and they're exposed on the two ends. So you can see the filling, the juiciness, the moist, everything. Don't quote me on this, but yeah, it's the only place I've seen. And they make it almost like a little rectangular shape. They definitely nailed the moist to fry ratio. Oh. I also have to say that the way Ming shook it up, they really spread out the chili oil where it's just not that hot for me. Right. As someone that doesn't love the spiciest, hottest food, and for someone that just want to dive right in and start eating, instead of dipping, wasting time dipping, I like this way more. Now these might look very scary with the chili oil, but trust, this is a super bite. Super bite for super taste. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cheap. 58 cents each. What are you going to do when you see the day when dumplings cost a dollar each? I'll be so sad. The search will continue. What's a good sign? Line down the stairs. We ordered the steamed shrimp dumpling, steamed seafood shu mai, the steamed rice noodle with shrimp, and the steamed sticky rice and chicken wrapped in lotus leaf. Look at yeah. this feast for three of us. Anyone watching who doesn't know what dim sum is, how would you describe it? To make it easy, Chinese breakfast. Chinese breakfast, 2.30. All right, we're starting with the shrimp. Let's do it. Oh. Mm. So fresh, wow. I'm in heaven right now. The shrimp is the most pump in this one though, in this one though. And then here we have the shumai. Mm -hmm. Damn, John, you know all the words. Oh. That's as fresh as dim sum gets, really. All right, we got the rice roll. Yes, the steamed rice roll with shrimp inside, which is my favorite dish of dim sum. I like to like drench it in soy sauce, like back and front. Messy goodness. Here we go. Mm. There it is. I have to spot. Mm. This soy sauce is the best. And the shrimp. This one takes the longest to pick up, but goes down the fastest. <laughs> That's a good point. This is steamed shrimp and chicken and sausage and other types of meat wrapped in sticky rice, wrapped up in a lotus leaf. So it has all the textures and the ingredients to make everything super hearty and fulfilling. Mm. It's amazing how I've walked by here so many times, and most tourists know about Hop Key and Wo Hop across the street, but I actually think Ping's is my favorite of the three. For sure. I've liked every single thing we've had so far, and the service. Yeah. In the past, you can see Chinatown didn't really have the best customer service, but if you come here, you'll see the difference. And they still cater really well to the local Chinese residents. All this food for three people already. Dim sum, take my money. Take my money. <laughs> yes. It's actually the first time I've ever been to Ray's before and it totally lives up to the hype. This is like a, a kid's dream come true with all the ice cream, candy everywhere. Wow. This spot is old school New York to the core. I want you guys to come to my store. I need more business. I am here from 9 o'clock in the morning until 4 o'clock in the morning. So please come here to my store, otherwise I'm going to quit. <laughs> Can we do three egg creams? All right, for Greg, for anyone who's not from the New York area, tell them what's in an egg cream. Okay, there's no egg, no cream. It's milk, typically chocolate syrup, but we have chocolate and vanilla and seltzer. So to me, it reminds me a lot of like a sparkling chocolate milk. If I can really describe it to anybody. Let's try. Very refreshing. You know, I used to work at this cafe in Ridgewood, New Jersey. I would make egg creams. Please blow my egg creams away. <laughs> this is the best egg cream I've ever had, actually. <laughs> By far. This is one of those New York spots I'm thinking like, I've lived here 11 years, I've never walked in these doors, and it's open 24 hours. I used to go out around here all the time, like shame on me. I remember it was a time we walked in here, we met Ray, and he was talking about how, you know, even though his prices are going up, he really does not want to raise his prices. He was forced to, but like very slowly. He was like, I don't want to raise my prices. He tries to keep prices as low as possible. He really is a neighborhood spot. He wants people to be able to afford everything he's got. Actually, and he just turned 90 years old. We have the mural on camera a few blocks away and everything in here is like stepping back in time including that old cash register right there i think a spot like ray's is a reminder that it's okay to be a kid sometimes 
It's okay to get an egg cream, milkshake, sundae, fried Oreos. You earned it. The best in the Lower East Side, forever. I could smell this food truck half block away. Right, you can tell we're in the right spot. We've got a Spanish telenovela playing behind us. So that's the first indicator. And it's $10 for a Samita. You've got $10 worth of avocado sticking out of that thing. This thing is incredible. I mean, it's got so much going on in here. You have the Oaxaca cheese. You have the Milanese de Pollo. So like very thin breaded chicken. You have the chipotle, you have beans, and you also have the papalo leaf. That's really what gives it like I can't even describe that flavor. It's extra oomph in here, but that chipotle, oh, I can't even talk about it anymore. We just gotta eat. All right, bon appetit. Mm. I needed three bites. Mm. Milanesa, first thing, the chicken. Mm -hmm. Breaded chicken, fantastic. So much flavor. There's a little spiciness too, the chipotle. I love the creaminess. You got creaminess of avocado, creaminess of the cheese, a little bit of mayo in there, but then that papalo leaf hits you. Oh. So you'll, you'll call this one of the best sandwiches in New York City right here. Mm -hmm. Easily. Look at this line forming. Would you say this is one of the most popular street food trucks in Jackson Heights Elmhurst? It is, yeah, and it's been here for a long time. They've been just consistently delicious too. Consistently delicious. That's important in New York. If you are not consistently good, people will find another spot. Well, this isn't our first rodeo at Rudy's, I will tell you. I don't eat onions or sauerkraut or any other nonsense. I'm a purist, so mustard is good enough. Oh yes, delightful, thank you, sir. Can I get two of the uh, Rudy's Blondes, a hot dog with mustard? Thanks. I mean, how many dive bars are pretty busy at two o'clock on a Thursday? Rudy's is an institution, and Bourdain knew that better than anybody, and we're ordering exactly what he ordered, a beer, a hot dog, just mustard. That's it. That's the beauty of Rudy's. You get a free hot dog with every drink you get. This could be one of the best cheap eats deals uh, in New York City. I, I love Rudy's. Mm. You know what? Their Blanc Lager is not bad at all. Their in-house beer. This spot is so popular with not only locals, but tourists and they never raise their prices. Don't raise your prices if you're watching Rudy's, but I've never seen them raise their prices since I've lived in New York and a true institution here. This is where I would take any first timer visiting New York. Like you have to put this on the tour. Uh, people are always coming in for them. Um, talk about Bourdain and see them. There's, there's always articles and videos. People look back and see that and they want to like come relive some of what he did. So the booths here before COVID used to be duct taped. It was like a thing of legend. And he said after COVID, they actually got new leather for the booths, but they've told me that they will be putting duct tape on eventually. And they are open from eight in the morning until I, I believe four o'clock in the morning. I think that we're doing it right because Bourdain used to like going to bars in the afternoon when no one was around, you know? It's an interesting time to have a beer, but it's a good time to have a beer. I love it, a pitcher of the Rudy's Blonde is 12 bucks, okay? there's some stuffy Manhattan bars where one beer is like nine or ten bucks. Raheem Muhammad, aka General Ak. The Aki way. All different type of sandwiches. Crab of honey buns, pop tart, Jamaican patty, pancakes, French toast, waffles. We do it all. Seeing people from all around the world, that's a blessing. All right, we're going for one of the signatures here. Bacon, egg, and cheese with honey bun. You got to grab whatever honey buns you want first. Yes, sir, man. How are you today? Yo, Ak, I want to get a bacon, egg, and cheese on a honey bun. You want ice. The Aki way. The Aki way. Sure, sure. <laughs> then we crack egg. Now we gonna pour some cheese into the egg. After we pour the cheese, now we scramble it. After we scramble the egg and cheese, now we gonna hit it with the black pepper and salt. Now we pour it in the grill. 
Then we put the mozzarella sticks on the fryer. Once the bacon and egg is ready, now we're gonna put them together. Now we put it on top of the honey bun. Get ready to go to sleep, okay? <laughs> now we wrap them up. And the result is OMG. Can't forget your bath. Never, never, never. Never, never, <laughs> never. Now we serve it to the customer. There you go, my brother. Hey, Rob. You're welcome. And you know we have to serve the other customer as well. Now we serve it to the customer. You enjoy, heck, my heck brother. You are. You will. I think you could feed three people with the amount of bacon and eggs he put. You saw how much bacon he put on the it's grill. It's like two portions into one. All right, man. Let's let's dig let's in. Do let's do it. Mmm. Mm. You know what does it for me? It's the honey bun. It's so soft. When you take that first bite, mm -hmm. you just get through every single layer, get all those sweet and savory flavors at once. I love that sweet and savory combination. This one with the icing on it too, adds even more sweetness, man. This is the New York bodega, like elevating the game to levels we've never seen before. This is crazy. Yeah, like I never even could have dreamed of having something like this growing up. Like bodegas, usually it was just back in the day, like bacon, egg and cheese, just simple stuff. Now, some next level. I'm still convinced that Easy Paella has one of the best sit-down lunch specials in all of Midtown. One of the things that makes Easy Paella different is we serve the paella in an easy way. So if you come here and just sit down, you probably have your paella served within the first 10 minutes. So you don't have to wait 45 minutes for a paella. We have very easy experience to try the best paella in town. Well, lunch specials here are great. We have sangrias, we have burritos, we have uh, lunch-sized paellas, and now we're gonna have Arepas. One of my favorite things about a spot like Easy Paella is like small, family-owned business. This is the, the lifeblood of the New York City culinary scene. Places like this, love the Venezuelan Spanish fusion. And, and Alex said he's not positive, but he believes this is the only paella burrito in the entire world for $9.95 during lunch specials. You're trying something pretty special here. Mm. What really does it for me is how unique it is to have a burrito shell with the paella rice. Never had that before, and somehow it just works out brilliantly. Love the flavor, love the chicken, so much going on. It's like the perfect marriage. Paella burrito. Less than 10 bucks for this. Paella in Latin America and in Spain is the reason to celebrate uh, birthdays. Father's Day, why not? Paella is the, the main dish. Look how big this sangria is, passion fruit for $5.95. Well, if you have a group of uh, six people or more, we have the best place to celebrate your birthday because the birthday person gets to eat and drink for free. Pretty damn good food in the neighborhood of Sheepside Bay. Exactly. It's good. So how long have you guys been here? Four months. Okay. So I've been here for four months, but my mother and my father had a place for like 45 years. Okay. What was it called? Papaleone. Stopped in 2017. And then in the pandemic, I came back, started experimenting in mom and dad's backyard, yeah. like wood-fired stuff, mostly wood-fired stuff. That's why the dough yeah. is really light and fun. It's not a super traditional New York dog. I mean, there's hundreds of pizza places in New York City. Right. How do you stand out as a new place? I think it's also about the lineage, respectfully, going back to like what my mother and my father did for so many years. Yeah. Always room for improvement, constantly learning new tricks as we go along. Innovation. Was that a little ode to DeFaro with the olive oil on top? Yeah, I mean, Dom DeMarco over at DeFaro. Nobody was putting basil on pizza before him. I look for this stuff. Just looking at this, we know this is gonna be absolutely fantastic. It takes time. Dress this pizza up and, and he doesn't have to put all the grated cheese on there and, and, and that beautiful olive oil. He doesn't have to do that. In New York, you can make bad pizza and get away with it. Hell, I'm pumped. Let's try this. I'm pumped. <laughs> Mm. Crunchy from the first bite. You told me to look for that as soon as we got here. I'm loving the vodka flavor. It's just right. And yes, I do look for that crispy first bite. I want that crispy first bite. And this pie delivers. Maybe we're seeing the evolution of New York pizza right now because we have shown classic spots which are gonna be here, I hope forever. You've got new spots like Lucia's here doing some artisanal stuff, doing it a little bit different but still staying true to the roots. Pizza is definitely evolving, not just in New York City but all over the world. People are taking more time to ferment their doughs, the 
crushed looks almost wood fired. I have to say, like this tastes healthy to me as well. Good point, John. It makes it more digestible as well. Yeah. When you take time to ferment the dough. I haven't been this impressed by a new spot in a really long time. You do it. You got a pizza dance? This is the pizza that makes me dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the old school vibe here. This is like bringing me back. Only in New York. Mm -hmm. This is narrow. Only in New York. Stools, counter. Love it. I think B and H is uh, like the last place of the kosher vegetarian and is a village, and I think in Manhattan. So with homemade cooking, Eastern Europe food, we prepare the food every day, so it stays delicious. Cold outside, warm in here. Some yeah. hearty soup. No better on a cold, gray, dreary day than some hot Did soup. Did you eat the soup? Okay, I will not. I check. Mm. You know, I'll be honest, growing up, I didn't always love matzo ball soup. Had I have grown up eating matzo ball soup this good, I think I actually would have liked it more. In front of me right now is like a who's who of Jewish food for people that aren't Jewish and maybe don't live in the New York area. We've got challah French toast. We've got matzo ball soup. We've got a latke. We've got stuffed cabbage, fried pierogi. Greg's got the borscht. If you never grew up with Jewish friends, just come here, order all this food, you can catch up. Yeah, it feels like we're at home here, but this is like, it's a whole different vibe. I love it. There's something about the food here in general, I'll say, is that nothing here is too sweet, too salty, too overpowering. It's just like very home cooking taste, very fresh. Just yeah. like, like I, I love it. Just you could taste the love and care they put into the food here. I think love and care is the right word. We saw their calendar with their customers here. This is a restaurant where if you've been here once, they'll probably remember you. This is the rabbi daughter. Nice. <laughs> I don't know this person. <laughs> I'm honestly shocked, does not always have a line out the door. I think you're not gonna find a place like this anywhere else. The food is delicious and just the vibe. You come for the food, you stay for the vibe. Oh, you definitely stay for the vibe. You become part of the place eating here. <laughs> it's chaotic in the best possible way. And they're known for their chicken tikka. This is a really interesting, delicious dish. Yeah, one uh, chicken tikka. I don't want to eat this. This looks too pretty to eat. This is like a work of art. All those colors. So what do we got? Break this down for us. Pretty much everything but the kitchen sink here. We have the chicken tikka, which is a very deep red color. You have the white sauce, which is like the yogurt mayo sauce. A uh, little bit of the hot sauce, and the green sauce, which is like a mint chutney. And also this mango pickle, which is a really kind of a secret thing you have to ask him for here. Now the owner is from Bangladesh, so it has that kind of Bangladeshi flavor in this plate. All right, let's try it. Mm. Mm. This tastes like something I would order at a nice Bengali restaurant. Not on the side of the street here in New York City. Wow, that yeah, first bite, yeah. that's a lot of flavor. That's a lot of spices. Yeah, very punchy spice. And we haven't gotten to the rice yet. The rice here is also very special. Mm. Like spicy, creamy, you get that mango pickle, that minty flavor, the biryani flavor. It's It's got it all this place. Dude, I have to say it. This might be the best rice I've ever had at a halal truck before. It's up there for me, for sure. Would you say the halal cart in New York is like the taco stand in LA? I would say yes. I mean, halal carts have really taken over New York, I say in the last 20 to 30 years. It's overtaken the hot dog cart. I would even say it's overtaken pizza as the number one street food. You know what I mean? want to say pizza is a street food, but I say it's definitely by far number one street food in New York City. I just have one problem with this. This is our first stop, and I want to finish it right now. That's the only problem I have with this. This yeah. is unreal. This is absolutely tremendous. I'm shocked there wasn't a longer line for this. They got an A, which is pretty rare for Chinatown back then, but now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sanitary A. <laughs> Good observation. Small pork, small dry shrimp. Cilantro scallion. Nothing breaks five dollars yet. You're right. For the curry ball. Do you feel like inflation is at Chinatown is hard? Not as hard. If it's thirty percent elsewhere, it's maybe ten percent here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. A few stools. They were really cool. We took it across the street. One of our favorites, rice noodles here. When do you normally eat this? 
Oh my gosh, you can eat this for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. But I love eating this for breakfast and lunch. Scallion and cilantro, which I saw in one of the reviews was recommended. One of my favorites is the shrimp. This is the dry shrimp. Oh, let's take a big bite. You ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Mm. Breaks apart easily. It's really simple. It's not overpowering me with any one flavor, except for all the soy sauce we put on oh, for, yeah. for the camera. It just tastes hearty and, and silky, exactly what I would want out of a rice noodle. How much was this, 275? Mm -hmm. Such a good deal, this is such a good deal. Under five bucks. Easy to eat, great to carry around. That's the nice thing about Chinatown, it's like you can sample so many different cheap food varieties, eat them on the go, pull up a stool. <laughs> it's so simple. And the soy sauce is what makes it. It's super important. If you love your bacon, egg, and cheese, you could forget your ketchup. You could get away with it. But with this, you can't get away without the soy sauce. So Santa Salsa started as a push cart in Rockaway Beach. Here is to enjoy the artwork on the walls with the food, the music. You can find almost in every corner hot dog carts where they have this super crazy version of hot dogs and burgers and, and, and sandwiches. Bacon. Onions, cabbage and carrots, crushed potato chips, ketchup, mustard, so special sauce, the Santa Salsa, and the Guasacaca. This looks like a hot dog that's about to go to some kind of award show that we're presenting it for the judges. This is the Pedro Con Todo, $5. This one, best hot dog in New York City by The Village Voice. And it has like every ingredient you could possibly imagine on this, like an American hot dog on steroids. This is a kosher beef frank. Onions, cabbage, chips, cheese, ketchup, mustard, Santa salsa. I don't even know where to begin with this. Salivating, like this, this looks fantastic. I'm gonna take a big bite. Mm. <laughs> it's really hard to describe how many flavors I just experienced in one bite. But I'd say a lot of them. And something I love about Latin hot dogs are the chips. The potato chips cut up inside of them. It takes me back to my time in Puerto Rico. I mean, he said they stay true to the roots of Venezuela and these hot dogs. This is just taking something simple, bringing it to South America and going absolutely wild with it. And I'm just such a huge fan of it. This is so interesting. You always ask us about vegan food. You have great options here. Just look at this one. It looks delicious. There's a sweet plantain inside with beans and wasacaca, Venezuelan green sauce. It looks delicious, guys. Oh my god, this is so good. These held up fantastic. Like, I thought this would be a complete mess, but somehow the way they're created, they actually hold up. As a Latin, sweet plantain in a hot dog is a great idea for a vegan hot dog. This is delicious. 12 chairs is the perfect combination because you can be casual here, but it also gets a really fashionable crowd. You can come here for a date, you can come here for a celebration. The brunches are really well known also. Thank you so much. Slowly cooked tomatoes, garlic, green hot peppers. This is what you come to 12 chairs for. These small plates, healthy. Mmm, delicious. I've even taken my mom here before and she is a super picky eater and she even loves this spot. I think we got too much appetizer, to be honest with you. This is enough for two or three people. So this is one of the signatures here. I used to always order this, the 12 chairs lamb burger. Look at that big piece of feta cheese right in the middle, right on top of lamb meat. This brings me back. I have not been to 12 chairs in, in too long, I will tell you, way too long. Mm. When I talk about a burger, to me it's all about the meat first. And this lamb is, so juicy, so tender. It almost doesn't feel right putting this between two buns, but that's exactly what we've done. It's like a gourmet burger, essentially. It's what you've ordered here. It's been too long, too long. I better slow down. I can finish this very, very quickly. 
Don Munchies. This may be the best name for a food truck in history. Oh yeah, and one of the coolest looking cars I've ever seen in my life, very colorful. And it's just desserts and snacks. After the day we've had, like I can't think of a, a better ending. Yeah, look what we got. I love their menu too. We've got churro bites, mini churros, elote, esquite. It feels like we're going to like some little bubble tea shop mm -hmm. in the style of the menu. It just smells phenomenal. I drool every time I walk by this car. Oh man. I don't think that's something you think of very often. Street food that's strictly dessert that's not an ice cream truck. Mini churros here. Like I don't know how I signed up for this job, but eight-year-old John would be very impressed and jealous that I get to do this right now. All right, Greg, jump in here. Let's try, Let's try this. You want to be like the hit of any party, walk in with these. The party will stop, everyone will rotate and move towards you. Oh man, they're very addictive. I, mean, I think he nailed the texture of these. It's like nice, crunchy, not overly sweet. It's got that cinnamon bite. These are incredible. A lot of kids are lining up here too. My parents watch it, very good spot. I have a few tables here as well. This used to be a plantain before I got buried by a pound of Nutella some strawberry sauce, and God knows what else. Oh, this is the sweetest plantain I've ever had in my entire life. I can barely tell it's a plantain. It's not a bad thing, though. Cheers to a heck of a night. Oh, yeah. Drinking the atole right now, which has yeah. the, uh, the cookie. Yeah, the Maria cookies, a little bit of cinnamon, milk in here. So it's being like pulverized, like crushed cookies. Basically drinking cookies and milk together. Like how can you go wrong with that? And not too sweet actually. It's a good point. Yeah. And I'm gonna make a bold statement. I think Don Munchies could be the next big place on Instagram or TikTok. Seeing how they make those desserts, I think it lends itself so well to social media. And these guys are gonna be a hit. I think so too. goal was to bring something new and funky to our neighborhood. This is where we grew up. This is, you know, where we spend most of our time. How did you come up with this Beria pizza idea? I think it's amazing. Well, one customer came in and he asked us, hey, um, do you guys have, he said he had a large party. He said, hey, do you, do you mind doing it in a uh, pizza form? We took a picture of it, we posted it on Instagram, and everybody just started And it took off from there. Yeah, everybody just started asking for it. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the favorite thing in the world Adriana and I order from our apartment, Birria Pizza. Beef inside, shredded cheese, onion, cilantro. It doesn't have tomato sauce or any other major attributes of pizza outside of the shape. We're gonna pop your Birria Pizza cherry, ready? We're gonna dip this in. Taking a little bath. Oh yeah, look at that. I never really had one of these. Yeah. Vamos? Let's do, do it. it, let's do it. Mm. Yeah. That right there, right? Speechless. I'm speechless. Yeah, that was good. Because you're dipping the meat in its own juices. Yeah, yeah. Pizza is a true guilty pleasure food. You've had a rough week. <laughs> it's Friday night. Order yourself a birria pizza. No matter how bad your problems are, there's nothing that a birria pizza couldn't do to solve it. Because there's some people that would be more comfortable here, and the food here is amazing, by the way. Yeah. But it's also really stylized. Like, this is, it's really, I mean, the perfect word's like Instagrammable. Yeah. Versus the spots that were more holes in the wall, but they felt more local and authentic. You can really find like whatever you want in this neighborhood. Half block off Times Square, one of the best hole in the wall Cuban restaurants in New York City. This place is no secret, I will tell you to locals. Locals know about this spot. And you eat a lot of Cuban food in Miami now, right? That's right. I mean, the standard in Miami is Versailles restaurant. They make some pretty good Cuban food, but let's try it in Times Square. Just one Cuban sandwich? Can I also get three Cuban coffees? Three Cuban coffees? Yeah. These are strong, right? Uh, no idea. I still wait for these coffees. Need an energy boost. This is no ordinary Cuban sandwich. This is special. For me, we've got roast pork, ham, salami, melted Swiss, mayo, mustard, garlic sauce, toasted bread. What else could you ask for? Yeah, let's try it. Let's see how it compares. Mm. 
Mm. It's so meaty. I've been through three different layers of meat there. The salami, the roast pork, and the ham all at once. Paired with that mustard, nicely toasted bread. That's a good experience. I'm enjoying this. It took me a good like 15 seconds to chew through it all. There is so much meat in this thing, man. But the garlic sauce, the mayo, mustard, I think it really makes it. Overall, a great Cuban sandwich. If you're a carnivore, you're gonna love this place. They have plates too that you can get. You don't just have to get a sandwich. You can get a pretty big lunch for about 14 bucks. Do you feel like this is, I'll use a big word, the antithesis of a Times Square restaurant? I mean, yeah, you don't really wouldn't think there's a place in Times Square. You would think it's a chain restaurant, so the only thing around here. A spot that locals actually go to. In fact, looking around, I don't think I saw a single tourist in here. Right off Times Square, half block away, surrounded by these big restaurants, big flashy spots, you got Maragon, which has been here like 50 years. All right, this coffee's dangerously addictive. You know how you get customers? You put your donuts at the window. That's like the <laughs> best policy ever, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. It's like a eye candy right here where people are, oh, now I gotta get the donut. Now this is a Greenpoint institution, right? Right, absolutely, John. It's been here for such a long time. If you don't come here on time, the Saturday or Sunday by noon, all the good stuff is gone or even there's a line out this door. This looks like the kind of place that has not changed in the over 60 years it's been open. I love these old school Donut shops. This was the original phone booth back in the day. I like how they kept the photo. <laughs> <laughs> it's a phone booth for like a 2022. My Marvel fans out there, this place might look familiar. It was used in Spider-Man No Way Home. And I want to spoil it a little bit for you because it was actually filmed in Atlanta. They just recreated the set to look like this. My father's been baking donuts since 1970 when he came here from Greece. Tons of donut shops in New York. What makes you guys distinctive? We stay the same in a world that keeps on changing. And on top of that, I think what sets us apart is we really have a family feel here. Uh, when people come in, they feel included. We have regular customers who've been coming in since I was a kid. Our donuts are $1.50, which I don't think is very common now for anything, for one of anything to be a $1.50. Classic glaze. We have a blueberry buttermilk, and we have a chocolate cake. So these two are like classic donuts that you would have had back in the day. This is sort of like a newer style. John, I've been coming here, oh my gosh, since I was probably like three, four as a kid. I could imagine <laughs> a little kid liking yeah, this place, actually. And I loved it. I kept coming back. <laughs> Mm. Mm. You got me saying that too. <laughs> I got the, the chocolate cake donut and these guys are consistently rated the top donut shop in New York City. And I can see why. I can imagine growing up in Greenpoint bringing boxes of Peter Pan to every single party. Oh, everything, John, everything. Weddings, parties, even, I mean, sometimes I heard stories of funerals too. And it was always a good time when they, when they say, oh, where'd you get it from? Peter Pan's, okay, now you can come in. This may be the best donut I've ever had in New York City. Mm-hmm. Making a bold statement here. Maybe my favorite. At least 40 minutes in this line. Wow. It, it's insane. It is. 107 people just waiting. It was only down to that, that pink truck down there. Huh. That's just, <laughs> that is crazy. Uh, we're gonna do the combo platter spicy rice. Okay, you like some veggie, some broccoli, carrot. Yeah. yeah. Give us the works. Uh, and this is about five pounds worth of food. So let's start from the top. They gave us French fries. They gave us falafel. Then we've got veggies, including broccoli here. We've got a mix of chicken and lamb. And if you can get to the bottom, somehow, some way, we have their famous spicy rice. It's actually better to use a spoon, but this, don't have this it. is messy. This is messy food. Mm. That is good. You know what it is for me? I think they're their white sauce. It's the best white sauce. I've ever had in the city. There's a reason for those long lines, folks, I'm telling you. I can see it, it's, it's good. I don't think it's good. I just feel like the flavors for Adele's are a little bit more classical New York halal, which is why I would personally put Adele's in my top five must visit food destinations in New York City. Ooh, I just got a bite of that spicy rice. It's got a lot of flavor. I think it was kind of covered up by the meat. It's growing on him. This is very good, I would definitely come back. Ideally not at the end of that line though. <laughs> I say it every time, but right in front of us, we have Radio City Music Hall. It's such a cool New York City moment to even be here. I think the evolution of halal carts and how popular they become in New York is really a testament to the diversity of New York because this was a food that was aimed at Muslim taxi drivers. Yep. And now all New Yorkers eat it. Many New Yorkers will tell you this is their favorite street food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's really something for everybody. If you like chicken, if you like lamb, if you're vegetarian, you can even get it with falafel and quick meal, you can even get fish. And I do like that they all bring their own kind of spices, maybe depending on the background of the country, you know, Egyptian, Bangladesh, Pakistani, wherever. 
I appreciate that. And I mean, it's, it, let's think of like New York pizza. Every place has their own little take yeah. on it, just like halal. And I don't think halal gets enough love from tourists. No. Way more from locals. You can find cheap eats at sit-down spots. You just have to get a little bit clever about it. Wings, eight-piece, original. Can we have the sauces on the side? Yeah. A lot of people think of cheap eats in New York. It's gotta be $5 this, $3 that. Like, you can order something for 14 bucks, share it, and get a really good value, too. Yeah, we're not, like, stuffing ourselves with, like, carbs. Some would call this healthy. Mm-hmm. Dude, this actually came, like, super quick. Oh, yeah. We waited like less than 10 minutes. Not even. I'm salivating at how crispy that looks and the smell coming. And then we have the two flavors waiting for us. What was it, the honey sweet garlic? Yeah, and then the sweet and spicy. Super crispy. Oh, hot. <laughs> and hot. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little scared at first because it's the sweet and spicy one, but yeah. it's very light in spice. So yeah. you're not gonna lie. It's actually really good though. Kind of like an Asian barbecue style type yeah. of taste. I have no idea what to expect here. I literally found this on Yelp. I looked up Yelp, newest, hottest locations. This was on there. Tell you what, I'm impressed so far. Crispiness, soy garlic's good. I'm really curious though about the sweet and spicy sauce. Do it. I kind of want to, I want to try that. This is a little food porn. <laughs> That's good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Definitely feeling those barbecue vibes mm. you mentioned, yeah. Mm. I just had some of the like the skin by itself. Even if you don't get any of the sauces, yeah. like I feel like the, the breading is like very well seasoned. <laughs> I swear you can smell that Savlaki down oh, the block. Right as we pour, oh, it smells phenomenal. Like, I love this place. We get uh, three lamb sticks, lemon salt, oregano, please. After holding one of these lamb sticks for a few minutes, my wrist is actually sore. There's like a pound of meat on it. They're very generous, so there's a lot of great souvlaki in Astoria. It's like the top Greek street food to eat in this neighborhood. Uh, the reason why we picked Frankie is not only because they're the best rated. I've actually been coming here since I was a little kid. Coming here, Steinway, 31st Avenue. They've been, been here for years. They used to be just a little cart. Now they're a bigger truck. They've been here since the 70s. And another reason, they also have lamb souvlaki. Hard to get lamb souvlaki in New York, and even in Greece, it's hard to find. All right, let's, let's do this. Yeah. Pumped. Mm-hmm. So tender. Oh, forget dollar pizza. I think I'd rather walk around with this. You? Oh yeah. I saw a dude just taking this to go, walking and eating. Yep. Oh. Better for you, high ke keto protein. Yep. Keto friendly. As a kid, I used to also get the big hunk of bread on top. We just ordered it at lemon salt oregano. That's the classic Greek way to get it. What'd this cost when you were a kid? I'm curious. Oh, I don't remember. Like a Maybe dollar? Five dollars something, two bucks. <laughs> Back in the 90s. I still think this is a good deal for New York. Oh, it is. And I feel like this place is so New York. We saw people of like every skin color, ethnicity, showing up here, mm -hmm. supporting a, a local institution. Love it. I love Astoria. I mean, I've, I say this every time I'm in Queens, that Queens is the best borough in New York City for food. And I know you're, you're not going to argue that. Oh, no. Best borough for food, best borough, period. I'm biased. I'm a born and raised Queens kid, but I love it. And this is one of the places that make Astoria and Queens in general very special. This would have been so good at a July 4th barbecue. Oh. I know. Yeah, get, get a bunch of lamb souvlaki, like. Who needs hot dogs? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Mike, I think when you ask most tourists, they're gonna say Nathan's is the go-to for a hot dog. But you talk to locals and Gray's Papaya is always in the conversation. It's been an institution here in New York. We were talking about earlier how we used to go there, coming out of clubs at four o'clock in the morning. This is now the last surviving location. Let's check this out. Let's go. Uh, places like this never change. The prints, the tropical vibes. Yeah. I'm gonna buy a t-shirt today. I didn't realize they sell t-shirts. See, so that's the other thing. If I was here the other day, somebody was ordering breakfast. I was like, breakfast? You could do breakfast here, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only for a very short window. Yeah? Good. One just with ketchup. Mm -hmm. One with hey, onion, mustard, sauerkraut. Two papaya drinks. Nicholas Gray opened Gray's Papaya in 1973. This is not the first of the tropical hot dog chains of New York. Actually, Papaya King's been around way longer. I still like Gray's better. Okay. Not much different. Hon Honestly, similar they're shit. so similar. Show people what you got. So I got your basic with ketchup. I know this is going to drive the internet crazy, but what I like. All right, internet, if you got a problem with Mike's order, feel free to say something. Yep. I want maybe a little more classic New York. I got onion, mustard, Sauerkraut. Can't go wrong with either of this. All right, let's take a bite of this. Here we go, man. Yeah. Mm. 
man, this tastes the same always to me. Like, nice snap, any time of day. This is great, I don't know. I, I'm just such a fan of Gray's papaya. And then topped off with a tropical drink, the papaya. This has been around for 50 years, I, I think for a good reason. How's yours? Man, oh my, I love it. I love it. Clearly love it, man. You're almost done. Almost done. One more bite. How many bites could you finish that in? Two? Three? Probably three. What do you like about the hot dogs here? It's been the same quality. Even when they had multiple locations across the city, it was always the same, regardless of which one you went in. And even now, it's still the same thing. It's a lot more expensive. What do you think about that? Like comparing Gray's to a street hot dog, we're gonna get viewers who wanna do either or. Yeah, I mean like there's people that eat dollar pizza. I, I don't recommend it. Take yourself on the subway right up here. Literally the subway's right there. And come get the best hot dog in New York City. So for you, this is the best. It's absolutely. Oh, not even close. How big is a chopped cheese sandwich to local New Yorkers? Um, see, I didn't really grow up in Queens. I heard it's more of an uptown thing, but I say in the last five, 10 years when I really started hearing about it, now it's everywhere. That's probably New York's most popular sandwich, I would say, along with the bacon, egg, and cheese. Oh. We got uh, three chopped cheese on Hero. Chopped cheese and Yeah. But everything, right? Lettuce, tomato, minutes, ketchup? Just everything, yeah. The famous original. We want the famous cheese. original. All right, boss. Well. Yeah, all the people come over here to check the chopped cheese every day. We sell a lot of chopped cheese now. Thank you, man. Much appreciated. It's not every day that we get to eat a sandwich that's this popular in the city where it was invented. Today's been a special day. It's been quite it the been. food adventure. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Let's, let's try a classic. Mm. There's something about the way it all goes together is what I really like about it. Yeah. And the uh, crispy bread. I think the, the pressing of the bread makes it extra special. I do agree. I know it's all about the ham pressed bread. I mean, hamburger meats, hamburger meat. Chopped up a little bit more finely, though, mm -hmm. and just perfected up here. I think it's probably taking it to another level. You eat this late night, have some drinks. Oh, this is like the perfect hangover food. People compare this to cheesesteak before, and while, yeah, there's some similarities there, I think these are two completely distinctive things. Definitely his own animal. Now, they were out of rolls. Originally, we wanted a roll, gave us a hero. I'm not complaining, though. No way. I would take this over a hamburger bun any day, really. The city is always evolving, always new food coming in and just twists on it. That's the beauty of New York City, a phenomenal food here. Food culture here is almost unmatched anywhere in the world. All right, Antonio, it doesn't get much better than Luigi's. It does not. This is the place you would see in a dictionary if you were to look up Brooklyn Pizzeria. It would look just like this. I love making pizza. I never had to work a day in my life because this is the easiest thing I have I could do. And I think pizza is Brooklyn. Italian tomatoes, rich Italian tomatoes. I love using my grande. I float it on. Makes for a beautiful, incredible pie. Some olive oil, the magic of pizza. Good olive oil. 50 years of doing this, there isn't a pie that comes out of this oven that I don't look at and say, wow, I want a slice of that pie. Look at this reward we've got. Look at this. You know, the last time I was here, I kid you not, a guy walked in and he said, I'm bringing this box to Buffalo, New York, which is like eight hours away from my daughter. Yeah, Luigi's, uh, as of late, has become internationally known. This pizza is made the old school way with love. They don't cut corners here. The owner is there all the time. And that's special. That counts for something, guys. Gio is saying how he inspects like every single pie that goes in that oven. He is a man who is serious. And look, I know in your review video you said it, almost no flop here. It's just a sturdy, Never. sturdy slice. And you know what I look for in a pizza is a, a nice balanced crust. You want you want it crunchy, but you don't want it like a breadstick. Oh, let's take a bite. Mm. Oh my. I just love the flavor of this pizza, man. The, the yeah. cheese, the tomatoes, Everything oh, is sauce, fresh, yeah. really thin as well. Yeah, this is not your standard plain slice in right. New York. It's unique. Absolutely. Thinner than the typical New York slice. It's really thin. It's a lot thinner than Joe's in my opinion. Unlike other places, everybody raves about New Haven pizza. Folks, New York is where it's at. You're not gonna find tourists here. The people that are walking in here, a lot of them live in the neighborhood. These are local places. That's what I love best about doing a South Brooklyn tour. Definitely the most famous Ukrainian restaurant in New York City. You know the New York black and white cookie, Veselka? We got the blue and yellow. <laughs> so you've, you've literally sold out of Ukrainian beer. We just have Polish beer left. Yeah, since the beginning of the war, I bought up everything that I could in terms of any Ukrainian 
uh, bottled beer and uh, about two weeks ago it, it ran dry so now I'm trying to support Poland and Polish beers uh, since they're doing such a great great deal of helping refugees. We're here serving great Ukrainian food and we're trying to do our best to support Ukrainians abroad. How are you guys going about fundraising? I know you said that every time somebody orders borscht it goes directly to the cause. We serve traditional Ukrainian borscht, so I thought what better way to give back all the sales of our Ukrainian borscht, whether you eat it here in-house, take out delivery, and we ship goldbelly.com nationally. Until I had the borscht here at Veselka, I really wasn't a fan of it. They actually turned me into a believer. Mm. This side of bread, Heaven. Mm. If we weren't filming at three restaurants today, I could eat a dozen of these pierogies easily. Potato and mushroom, I went for the fried variety here. Mm. I know that boiled is more traditional, but these fried pierogies, like, mm. this is true like Ukrainian comfort food. But I'll also say it's become New York City comfort food as well. Now remember, Vasoka used to be open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. People for years and years would come here after a night of drinking to eat pierogies. Now they close either at 11 or midnight on weekends due to the pandemic, some changes, but still, I love what they're doing here. I really love the cause and how the city has come together to support a restaurant that I already think was well deserving of it. Fantastic. <laughs> Lower Manhattan was built up all around it. it. Smells like American here. Growing up in Italy, did you see these types of places in movies as a oh, kid? Oh, absolutely, yes. Pulp fiction. <laughs> of course. I mean, come on. Pigs are filthy animals. I don't eat filthy animals. Yeah, but bacon tastes good. There may be no better diner scene in American cinema history, you're right. Every possible thing you might be ordering, they're prepared for you. Do the French toast, please. French toast? I have a two egg scrambled with bacon. Oh, this is the famous maple syrup? They got it ready wow. for you. It's so sticky. You know, there's something about diner coffee, you just can't get this flavor anywhere else. I grew up in New Jersey, which has more diners than any other state in the US, about 600 of them. And I would order eggs at like 11 p.m. I was one of those people that would do breakfast for late night dinner. Even the eggs all taste the same to me. There's just this like <laughs> consistently good diner taste. It tastes like New Jersey to me. This tastes like New Jersey. First time ordering French toast at a restaurant, period. I think I tried to make them at home when I was still living in Italy, but I mean, they're not the same, of course. Let's dig them in the in the syrup. Oh, look at that. Mmm. That's actually good. You weren't expecting it's, it to be it's good. It's very simple. No, I was expecting it to be um, to be heavier. Yeah. Very nice. It's a it's a good breakfast. If you didn't know, the word diner came from dining car because diners actually used to be on wheels. That's why they have the shape that they do. I didn't know that. I've always wondered why they're called like that. Why are they called diners, eh? A diner should be your first breakfast in New York City. Even if your hotel has a free breakfast, I still say check out a diner at least one morning. Possibly make the argument that we have the best job in the world. We're just eating diner breakfasts all day. If you can think of an easier job, tell me what it is. I don't know. Casa Adela is absolutely the most famous Puerto Rican restaurant in New York City. Been here since 1976, and you know what? I've never eaten here before. If you don't know what you want to order, I always recommend mofongo. Yes, it's just it's, right. it's platano, right? It's, it's plantains. It's plantains. Yeah, we love plantains. With a bunch of veggies, some beef. Let's try it. Mm. Okay. It's the first time I ordered a mofongo in New York City that I'm a huge fan of. Oh my god, it's so good. Mm. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. A lot of New York City businesses are struggling right now. There's not an open table midweek during lunch. That says something. Okay, this is my, my ketchup. It's really big in Puerto Rico. No. Our friend introduced us to it, and we love it for that reason. Kind of addictive, just a little. Perfect snack. Oh, wow. 
these might be the best platanos I've ever had, period, even in Puerto Rico. And I can't believe I'm saying that, but these are out of this world, this melt in your mouth. So this place is really loud because you have families here eating together and it really, really makes me feel like I'm in my aunt's house. It makes me feel at home. I like it. I'm going to do some Pakistani food to begin. Thank you. Because it's been such a cold winter, having all these amazing food options under one roof, it's like foodie heaven. Four of their signature lamb chops, just coated with cumin, coriander, Pakistani spices. So you know this is gonna have quite a kick to it. I'm just salivating looking at this thing, guys. Oh, it smells so good too. Mm. You know, if you're into lamb chops with a little Pakistani flair, some spicy kick to it, you gotta try this. These are not your average lamb chops. This isn't something you normally order at a food market. This is something I would typically order at a higher end restaurant. I'm getting a kick out of this. Mm. We're off to a heck of a start. Oh. Mmm. My mouth is watering already. Mm. Has so many flavors going on. I never had a burger like this. It is so good. And the meat is so tender. I love everything about this burger, I swear. Mm. It's so juicy, wow. Then you add the mint chutney to this. Like, It's definitely adding a lot of flavor and spice to a burger that I'm not really used to. I'm certainly happy about. This is what I love about food markets is everybody can be happy and you can try so many different places in one day. These are so good that I just want to eat them until all I've got left is bone. Oh. People are always asking me what's something you should do on a rainy day and today it's rainy, it's cold, it's windy. I always say go to a food hall and New York's got plenty of them. I know that Little Italy is right around the corner, but if you want authentic Roman street food, Trapezino right here is the spot. This is the only Trapezino in the United States. And what's incredible is just $9. We could actually classify this as cheap eats in New York, sitting in a beautiful European style cafe. Pizza Bianca dough. And inside the pocket, you've got that meatball just stuffed inside. Mmm, what a meatball. Mm. If you put this on spaghetti and meatballs, this would rival anything you can get in Little Italy. I would have paid way more than $9 for something this good. Mix it up with a cocktail or wine. I would say this would be a good date spot as well. How could you possibly walk around Rome eating this and not getting a messy face? I don't know, you tell me. You're out with friends in the Lower East Side and you want to go somewhere before going out to a lot of the bars and the clubs here. This would be a good spot, not too expensive, but just right before going out. Perfect for Chinatown. Look at this tiny little booth. We got air conditioning, foods on the tables. This is a little weird alley street. I used to get my hair cut here for five dollars actually. <laughs> <laughs> and I just get a quick buy after. Yes, and this place is called Tasty Handful Noodles, but we ordered the pan fried dim dumplings because they are a little underrated and you can't sleep on them. To know that it's a good pan fried dumpling, the outside is a little crispy, lightly fried, and then the inside is uh, chewy. Take a bite and look at the inside. Mmm. Wow. It's got such a nice crispy exterior. And then we have a good portion of pork with just a couple chives, some veggies, I maybe some of the soy sauce on top. Now, I've actually never eaten here before, and I know so many other pan-fried dumpling spots in Chinatown, but already one bite. I'm really impressed with this choice. Let's take another. Mmm. I'm impressed. It's actually one of the best pan-fried dumplings I've had in Manhattan's Chinatown. Is it great tell. Very fresh. Very, very fresh. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Mmm. Mm. Mm. It actually tastes so much better with the soy sauce. You can't, you have to dunk it in. The soy sauce is so good. And there's some ginger in there, some mm -hmm. chives. It's so fresh, so refreshing. So you can get them frozen too, right? Yes, take them frozen, take them home. 
because you got the, all these options right here. I'm kind of curious about this $5 haircut, to be honest with you. <laughs> how, how good of a haircut is it for five bucks? Chinese Americans, when they're younger, we all got the same haircut, just kind of <laughs> short everywhere, and that's what I got. Yeah. Yeah, and it was good. And then the dollar tip. We have a private booth, and we spent $7. This is one of the cheapest ways to eat out in Manhattan and actually have some privacy. Like, would you admit this is a pretty good cheap date for a couple? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it comes with water. It comes yeah. with water. <laughs> I love this. We have not one, but two different doors in this yeah. booth. There's so much things here that's... A lot of food places, a USPS, and there's haircut. Your five. Spots. Oh, we're gonna stop. I'm, I'm gonna stop by your five dollar haircut. I'm, I'm, I'm in for this. I think it's absolutely crazy how this street had some of the most murders in U.S. history here on Doyer's bloody <laughs> angle. And today it's so colorful and full of restaurants. I would pose right here too, just like that girl. Of all the street food I've ever eaten in New York City, this may be my favorite. Oh, uh, thank you so much. You guys are amazing. Oh, wow, it's so crazy. This, this puts a smile on my face every single time. For people who don't know what fushka is, how would you describe it? So basically, fushka is a kind of street food of Bangladesh that is very popular, fine ingredient, like smashed potato and other sort of spices that's it's secret. Sometimes they don't share, but coriander powder. So they all mixed it up and put in a into this uh, puffed uh, braid, you call. They make this uh, turmeric chutney, it's called. Okay. And this is how it's made. And, and there's a little bit of it. shredded egg on top. Oh yeah, they just spread some egg, so it's give you more kick of the flavor. Okay, so you want to cheer? One bite, everybody One bite, rules. one bite, that's the rules. <laughs> All right, ready? Let's do it. Mm. I love the spices of the chutney. Oh, it's so... So good. I think if you read our expressions, you can see how much we enjoy that bite. Right. It's just like flavor, wham. Just uh, busting inside your mouth. Oh my mm. gosh, it's so highly, highly recommend this food. You and Hyundai Galbi, we're on 36. Now we said that Koreatown was really centered around 32nd, but just a couple blocks away, there's still some amazing spots. I heard a lot about Yoon and Korean barbecue is definitely one of the best things to do in K-Town. It's a little off from the normal strip, but it's definitely yeah. worth the walk. We are the one who invented the hand cut, which is like diamond cut. So if you go to all the Korean barbecue restaurants, and if you see all these like the cuts like that, that actually was invention from my mom, my grandfather. The nice thing about this restaurant is it's definitely a little bit more upscale, so it's a good place for celebrations, for dates, anniversaries, they have amazing cocktails. How do you say cheers in Korean? So uh, it's gunbae. Gunbae. All right, gunbae. gunbae. So age is very important in Korean culture, right? So if you're specifically older than someone, you're going with someone who even is underage, if that older person tells you to drink, the younger person has to drink. This would be a little bit overwhelming if you've never been to Korean barbecue before. Just on this alone, you would probably be full. They don't call these appetizers, these are side dishes. It's meant to be eaten with the meats. Yeah. Bobby, the owner, was telling us that the meat they buy is actually from Nebraska because he said that the way they raise the cows out there is similar to the way they raise the cows in Korea. It's very much meant to be a lot of people sharing it at once and it's like a good get together and all that stuff. All right, then you take whatever side dish you want. I'm gonna take a little bit of kimchi. This is like a staple, so you gotta, you gotta do it. And then uh, I'm just gonna put a little seasoning on. Cheers. Half kimchi, half short rib. Mm, this is amazing. Finally, I learned how to properly eat at a Korean barbecue spot. So thank you, Dave, for actually teaching me some of the intricacies here. In Korean etiquette, it's usually the youngest person is supposed to serve everyone else before they serve themselves, or they'll usually have someone serve the youngest person. Never had kimchi stew before, but <laughs> looks interesting. <laughs> Too spicy, or? I can handle it, I mean, it's, okay, I'm feeling a little heat now, but like something in the back of my throat, you know that feeling like? That was incredible. So good, that was the best Korean barbecue I've ever had. 
Yeah, it's awesome. Two and three. Thank you. Thank you so much. They started as an inconspicuous little cart in Corona, Queens, only on weekends, upgrading to a bigger spot on the Lower East Side, getting covered by the New York Times, and then blowing up and being, you know, one of the most popular mm -hmm. places here. That's why I love coming here, because not only is it just the food that you're enjoying, it's the backstory. Yeah. You know, it's the hustle that nobody sees, that what goes on behind the kitchen. I was really pumped Marco took me here, because you don't find tamale spots at every corner of Manhattan. Check that out right there. And they make their own masa, which is really difficult, not common at all in New York City. I've had this in Mexico plenty of times. Mm. Tastes homemade, man. Just fresh, soft, and I'm actually bringing three of these home. One for Adriana, and two for her ofrenda for Day of the Dead, which is where you give offerings to deceased relatives and friends for that altar. Adriana specifically asked for tamales because her dead relatives and friends love tamales. I love tamales, too. On a less dark note, I really wish this was in Brooklyn because I'd be coming here all the time. Mm. The mole poblano, really, really good. Wow, that hit, that that hit that hit different. That hit different. That's really, really good. I have not seen McDougal Street here in Greenwich Village this crowded in over a year. What a positive sign for the reopening. Yeah, it's not just one. One classic sandwich. One classic. Do you want it spicy? Do you want not spicy? Medium. Medium. This is how we make you guys hungry. We, we do this intentionally. <laughs> Five bucks. I'm shocked they haven't raised their prices yeah. over the years. You? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's word of mouth advertising. It's gotta be. Easily one of the most famous places on McDougal Street, which was hopping. Uh, I'm happy to see the village coming back to life. We're in the heart of Greenwich Village. Let's try, you ever tried this before? I have not tried this before. This one's my call, so we'll yeah. see if he likes it. Hmm. Tangy. Tangy. It's just like it's I remember tangy it. Than I thought. Yeah. yeah. It's really sweet. Two different types of pork. And then we're really tasting those pickled carrots. I like the, the hard roll a lot too. You know, is this the best banh mi sandwich in New York that I've had? No. Is it one of the best deals for the village? Heck yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I should bring her on the video. <laughs> say of all the neighborhoods in New York City, the village has by far taken the most advantage of outdoor seating. It's really something else around here. Can I do the uh, three small fingers with a sticky sauce? Evan, you've told me that Stickies is your favorite New York City chain. That's why I decided to put this on the video, about $6 for three chicken fingers and this is a new york institution so many cities are known for their local chains like new york used to just have shake shack and that went national and everything like that but you know who in this world doesn't love a good chicken finger and we got the white barbecue sauce which is not really common in the northeast no absolutely not this is something that you know in my experience is very closely associated with alabama try. it's got tons of sauce mm. So crispy. Crispy, juicy, freshly made. You're not gonna find this too many other places. Really super affordable by New York City standards. And plus, it tastes amazing. For an extra dollar fifty, you can get one of their specialties. And we got the vampire killer. Can you, can you talk about these ingredients? Oh, absolutely. Wait, hold on, before I do that. What we have right here is I got some fried garlic, because again, what else does fried garlic not make better? Um, you got garlic sauce, you got parmesan, you got parsley. Like honestly, like this is definitely something that you don't want to have before your first date. Otherwise, they may not want to get too close to you. Yeah, vampire killer, date killer, there's a lot of garlic. Be careful, seriously. <laughs> Alright, let's, let's try this. This looks nuts. Mmm, packs a punch. If you love garlic, this is, this is what you want. This is just beautiful. This, this is art. Evan, you found your match. You know what the best part about this experience is right now? As we're eating this, over there is a Soul Cycle station. So Evan, what do you say after we finish the last one, we go and uh, do a little cardio for 30 minutes or no? You wanna keep eating? No, we're gonna go eat. Like, I don't know if you know me, but we're not stopping. After having that finger, I can honestly tell you, there's no way you can go kiss anybody after that. It's okay. gonna keep you single for a long time, oh yeah. You gotta, you gotta pet the dog though, you gotta pet the dog. This is not a real dog for the record. It's fooled me <laughs> 10 times. <laughs> I 
This isn't a hidden gem at all. I've, a lot of people have heard of Patsy's. I've never been here before. The original Patsy's, East Harlem, opened in 1933. Look at this thin slice, big flop. Uh, let's try some New York history. Mmm. Two dollars for this? Incredible. Yeah. Really small. It's really thin. It's like the perfect grab-and-go slice for the city. I mean, you can go inside and sit too. When you sit down and sit, they only serve you the whole pie. Wow. And it's cash only. Thin crust. The tomato sauce is very original and unique. It doesn't drip down your face when you're eating it. Hands down, best pizza in the city. Hands down. Patsy's was Derek Jeter's favorite pizza spot. The only thing we didn't try yet was dessert, and Khao Nam isn't your ordinary spot in Thai town. For our last stop, Khao is a yet another hyper-authentic Thai restaurant in Elmhurst. They're known for traditional Thai dishes, lots of takeaway, particularly under COVID, but they also do great desserts, like the Khao Bua that she's griddling up behind us. Uh, they're really crepes, but when you see them, you'll know why they're called uh, Thai tacos. Thai iced coffee. The most sugary coffee drink you can have this side of the Atlantic. To me, it feels more like a dessert than an actual coffee. Here we go. So what we have in front of us is a Thai crepe called Kanom Bois. So what color do you have? It's red. Okay, so you have salted coconut, and there's like a little smear of meringue. So it's kind of savory, salty, sweet. This is definitely not your traditional American dessert flavors. We've got salty, we've got lime in here, and a really crunchy, very different, but I would say a good mixture of flavors. Like you're, you're not gonna forget eating something like this, or as Joe called it, a Thai taco. The yellow one has uh, candied egg yolk called the uh, foie thong in there. This is the traditional uh, shaved ice dessert called the top tim krob. So these are uh, water chestnuts in tapioca. Mm. Different. This is a Tokyo chicken hot dog. A sweet crepe around a hot dog. Completely different experience. I love it though. Mmm. Really good. Tokyo pandan. So this is a pandan. Pandan is a, it's a plant, a leaf used in a lot of Southeast Asian cooking and desserts. That is really, really, really good. The Tokyo hot dog is actually the top three things we've had today. Completely surprised by this hot dog meets dessert. Down the oh block. God. Down the block. All right, we're almost there. I smell something. I smell it. I can't even see the place. I just see the smoke ahead and I smell barbecue already. I feel like your typical American probably would not equate Chinese food with barbecue, but they would be way off, right? You're right, you're right. And this is a whole different type of Chinese food. This is actually originated from Uyghur, which is the Muslim part of China that many people don't know about. And there's a lot of lamb. The Muslims are the only pork, so lamb is the go-to thing, so we have to get the lamb skewers. It's right. simple food, but it's barbecue done right. Got it. Woo! <laughs> so we, we decided we're, we're gonna eat our lamb skewers at the top of a parking lot overlooking Flushing. The perfect ending to an amazing afternoon. The it smell is, is so yep. strong and so good. Lamb and goats uh, are abundant in, in the Uyghur part of China. And what we have right now, it's marinated in salt, pepper, cumin, garlic, Sichuan pepper, a lot of things. So let's, let's see what the Chinese barbecue experience is all about. Medium, medium spice. Medium spice, they're, they're not sure if I can handle this. <laughs> ben just shook his head from behind the camera. I think I'll be okay. <laughs> Ben's like, no. <laughs> ben knows me well. Okay, let's just try it. Let's, yeah, do, let's do it. Mm. Okay, not too spicy. No, it's okay. It's really good. It's really tender. Ooh, just a lot of oh. flavor. They really season <laughs> this well. Yep. They do. It's a known street food in China. People just eat this late night. For a dollar fifty, I mean, how how can you go wrong with this? Uptown Bronx, two thirty third, and you and I have something in common. We're both first generation 
here in the US. My family's from Ukraine. Your family's from Jamaica. Jamaica and you insisted we come here for some patties, right? Yep, because they make the patties fresh, handmade. There's nothing frozen. So I was like, why not? Let's go get some spicy cheese beef patties from Uptown Bronx. I'm excited. I want to see this. Let's get in there, guys. Can I have three spicy um, with cheese? Oh, 46 grams of sugar. 92% of your daily sugar intake. Number one go-to meal if I'm super hungry. Yeah. If I'm hungover or something like that. This is, oh, I'm broke and I have very little money. This is what I get. This is the secret how to cool down a beef patty though. You gotta be very careful when you eat beef patty because you can burn yourself. Yeah. Right? So what you do is open it up and you just blow inside of it. And this is how you know it's in a real original beef powder. It's like, it's all like ugly. That's how you know it's handmade. It's not all uniformed and look all pretty, right? I'll take your word for it. I don't eat a lot of beef patties. You don't eat a lot of beef patties? I don't eat a lot of beef patties, but I'll tell you if I like it. I'll well, be... Where are we about to convert you? Convert me, let's do it. Right, let's Here do we it. go. Mmm. Mm -hmm. It's so good. This is actually probably the best beef patty I've ever had in my life. I think I'm about to go that far. Same here. I don't know, man. I'll sell my soul for these. You'll never believe it. And you said you've been to Jamaica a, a lot of times, right? Yeah. How does this compare to actual Jamaica Jamaican beef patties? It's pretty close. Pretty close. I wouldn't lie to you. It's not the Jamaican patty though, but it's pretty close. If you can't find it in New York City, or in this case in the Bronx, like you're, you're not looking hard enough, you can find anything here. I feel like I'm, I'm expanding my horizons so much, and, and I'm somebody probably didn't consider the Bronx as much of a, a foodie destination, but it, it totally is. Well said, John, well said. In front of East Wind Snack Shop, and Michael, you told me that you're vegan, and this spot has a lot of great vegan options. Yeah, um, the thing about Windsor Terrace is not a ton of like solid vegan places, but there are a lot of little hidden places like this one where you can get my favorite vegan dumplings. They're vegetable dumplings, and they're like the best I've ever had. And it says absolute best dumplings NYC, New York Magazine, Time Out New York. So they have stuff for meat eaters and vegans. I'm excited to see what they got. Let's get in there. So they offered us hot water as we came in. <laughs> I might, I might take them up on it, yeah. So this store was inspired by the old coffee and tea houses in old school Chinatown. And those places had uh, lots of counters and places where people, you know, were coming off of work to come and sit and have a quick lunch and have lots of great Chinese snacks. So when I started to develop my uh, vegetable dumpling, I, I still wanted to taste and feel the textures of vegetables. I wanted to celebrate vegetables inside a dumpling. These are the biggest vegetable dumplings I've ever seen in my entire life. They're absolutely <laughs> jam-packed with veggies. Look at that. Let's try it. Let's do it. Let's do it. He's right about those those big vegetables, right? Like, I'm not used to having that in a dumpling. I've never had a dumpling quite like this before, at least like a, a vegetarian dumpling. So many vegetables crammed in here. Mm. And if you like the texture of vegetables, really like that veggie flavor, this is great. So much going on in here. I teach piano lessons in the neighborhood and I walk pre-pandemic, walk house to house and teach lessons. And this was a perfect place for me in like a late afternoon when I've got like, of 20 minutes that I need to account for, like pop in and like get some dumplings and just hop into this really cool place. I guess that's why they call it Snack Shop. Man. Yeah. Pop in. Yeah, two of the short ribs. All right. So you want to place it in here to go? Yeah, to go. Here we go. Moment of truth. The handoff. Thank you. Right. Special thanks to Anna, one of my Patreon members, for tipping me off to this place. Technically, we crossed over into Hell's Kitchen. This is about a 15 minute walk from Times Square. It's a little bit outside the Midtown boundaries, but I think it's worth the hike. Braised short rib with gravy and potatoes. Look at that heat just coming out of it. This is so good. Oh, I wanna repeat that first bite over and over again. That feeling, oh my. God, that's good. The meat is so tender and juicy. Awkward. The meat is just collapsing out of this. It's almost too much meat. Mm. This may be a contender for my favorite thing in this video, and I didn't think I would say that. This actually might be my favorite thing we've had today. 
You guys, we are in front of Kosar's. Now, many of you have heard about the bagel, the most famous Jewish food in New York City. But how many of you have heard of the Bialy? Because it was founded by Morris Kosar, who was from Bialystok, Poland. And in fact, the whole word Bialy is basically a shortened word from Bialystok, because that's where the Bialy originated. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, can never. you show us that? We've never seen anything like that before. Thank wow. you. Wow. Yeah. We, we gotta get that. That is not a regular BL. Yeah, and it comes with everything. That's everything inside. Yeah, everything inside. All right, guys, we have got both the Bialy and the bagel in front of us. This bagel, by the way, is absolutely one of the largest bagels I've ever seen. It barely has a hole in the middle, but we're still gonna call it a bagel. Carla, can you talk more about the differences outside of the obvious in the middle? Right, besides their obvious appearance, because this Bialy has that depressed center full of the onions, because we got the onion Bialy. Um, the basic big difference is the ingredients. Like I said, Bialy, much, much simpler. Just flour, water, yeast, and salt. That's it, very simple. And then because you're adding the onions in the center, it's onions as well. But I mean, you can forego yeah. the onions and just do garlic or something like that. But the bagel has malt and sugar. So like when you taste it, you can taste like the sweetness even in a plain bagel, but not the Bialy. The Bialy to me, I would say like the dough itself is like the consistency and the taste of like pizza dough okay. if you didn't put sauce or cheese on it. If you just ate the pizza dough, you know, crust or something like that. Here right. we go. I haven't had this in a long time. Going in. Much thicker than a bagel. Completely tastes like pizza dough. I see that. You can feel it, right? And then mm -hmm. it's airy, but not like the big airiness that's in a in that's yeah. in a bagel. And you know, it's not it's not as high, obviously. It's, I mean, de it's denser. Right, it is denser. De definitely, definitely. You know, the yeast is making it rise, but it doesn't have that extra added sugar, which I think makes the bagel rise exactly higher as well so because there's no sugar definitely in this one i gotta get to the onion part that's what that's what i've been eyeing yes yes i i do too but i'm gonna have to go for a bigger bite than mm -hmm. this mm. oh you got to the onion mm. i ripped right to it look at this thing guys i would say the onion's a nice surprise in the middle i'm a fan of onions if you like onions you may like bialis more mm. than bagels but i will say that i grew up eating bagels all the time in New Jersey, and I'll still take a bagel over a Bialy, but if you're visiting New York and you want something very unique, an old school Bialy place like this, you are telling me is extremely hard to find. So, <laughs> there's a line at three o'clock on a Thursday. That's how you know a place is good. Where'd you go? <laughs> I'm right here. Rosie with uh, potato chips. What we got was a roti with aloo or potato curry. Roti. Mm. It's really nice and what I like is it's also vegetarian. I know a lot of you out there say that I eat too much meat on the channel. I specifically ordered this thinking of you guys that you know not everything we do has to always have meat with it. But you no, know, just really soft on the outside, chunky pieces of potato, a little spicy, just the way you would expect it. Coconut water, which is frozen. Oh, this is good. Ooh. Refreshing, right? Refreshing and <laughs> really cold too. Like I know we were actually looking for somebody who was cutting fresh coconuts outside. We didn't find him here, but you know, this is the next best thing. I mean, straight out of Guyana. Mmm. Dark really good. I love the spices in the curry. It's like really fresh. You can tell that they just grinded the spices or something. Really good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's so good. <laughs> so good, it makes you laugh. I don't even know where she's running. For the next stop, we are waiting in line. The line's moving quick. And you had a funny interaction with this bakery yesterday, right? Yeah, because I was reading online that this place sells out of egg tarts really quick. So I called in and they were like, oh, just come tomorrow, come tomorrow. 
and they didn't allow me to make any kind of reservation or order at all. So here we are. Here we are. The line's moving quick though. These egg tarts look absolutely humongous. I know. Look at that. It's like this big pretty much. Portuguese egg tart. What do we got here? Oh yeah, we have the very, very good baked crust, egg, and sugar that's perfectly burnt on the top. And these are supposed to be the best egg tarts in the city. I've never had them before, but we'll try them out. I've never had these ones before either. The last time I had an egg tart in Manhattan's Chinatown, it was so small, I could practically eat it in one bite. This would be physically impossible to eat in one bite. So we're gonna really enjoy this. All right, ready to try it? Let's try it, hold on. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, one, two, three. Mmm. There's so many layers to this thing. Oh, wow. Right? I mean, you get the, the crispy little crust, savory in the middle, little sweet. It really feels like a cake because mm -hmm. the crust is very, like, I don't know if it's butter in there, but it really feels like that kind of consistency. And this egg, it really doesn't feel like an egg. It's like very gooey and just a lot of flavor in this. It's unbelievable. They actually had another store here before, and since I was away at school, they've made uh, significant changes. This is one of the biggest buffets I have ever seen in New York City. I mean, this is Las Vegas level. They have like beef tongue right next to tuna salad. Okay. You have to see this line behind me. There's no YouTube promotion, no TikTok. This is just locals knowing where to go. Some carrots and raisins. So this is plov, it's the national dish of Uzbekistan. Uh, here they used carrot, or two different types of carrots, yellow and orange. There are, I believe, some raisins or craisins. I'm not sure. Raisins? One. Yeah, cranb dried cranberries. Yeah. It's cooked for a long time. The meat is slow cooked. It looks very tender, as you can see. I think we literally have every single ingredient in one bite. Uzbeki, plov, I've had this before. I was most excited to try this again. I love lamb. Here we go. Let's Keep us. in mind how tender this meat is. Let's try this. Oh, wow. Flavorful. Just melts in your mouth. So much flavor. I just I just want more of that meat, guys. I like the, the sweet hints that the raisins or craisins give when you're eating the rice. When you go to a supermarket like that and you see a line that takes you 20, 30 minutes to get served, I think Generally speaking, that's a that's a pretty good sign that you're gonna get food like this. Also, I haven't seen in any of the Brighton supermarkets or any Russian supermarket I've been to where someone is serving the food to you. It's always grab and go, like buffet style. You know, in my experience, I've seen some of the best food in New York City can be found in little ethnic supermarkets like this. I'm telling you, really true. Best thing you can do, apart from visiting a Russian supermarket, is find yourself some an older, Uzbek lady friend <laughs> and she will she'll make you the best plov you've ever had in your life Are these are they, are they waiting for us or any around here somewhere with an older Uzbek ladies? <laughs> I don't know. I've been, I've been I've been searching my whole life I can't seem to find one. It's Taipei Hong. It's an excellent Taiwanese restaurant And if many of you have watched my channel, you know I came back from a trip in Taiwan in January and I was looking for a good Taiwanese spot and this is it Is honestly one of my favorite things about New York City is that you could just wander into what feels like a little hole in the wall here and have absolutely tremendous food waiting for you. Getting a little sneak peek of what's coming here. I hope it looks better in person. I think it's gonna look way better in person. I hope it looks better in person. Look at this steamed bun with pork belly inside. Taiwanese burger. So much love went into this. Ready? Right, I'm ready. Let's, let's do this. Let's do this. Mm. 
this pork so much flavor and you have the little pieces of peanut on top. It almost feels like there's a peanut paste on it when you eat this. Wow, like really good choice for a complete hole in the wall, I have to say. I know, it is so good. You got the little peanuts, like John said, the pickled mustard as well, and the pork belly along with the steamed bun. Perfect combination, you have so many flavors in this. It rocks. Authentic too, I went to Taiwan, and this is the closest that I've gotten to good pork belly burger in New York City. Too many tourists make the mistake, and granted, if it's your first time in New York, you might not have time to spend 40 minutes you know, on the train coming to Flushing, but if it's your second trip to New York, if you've just moved to New York, or if you're here on a longer trip, you owe it to yourself to come to Flushing. I've been here before, it's just a, a foodie's paradise, I would call it. Yeah, it really is a foodie's paradise. You come here, you'll be in love with the neighborhood just from the food. We're doing thighs, we're doing legs. What are you, what are you recommending? Well, I'm a fan man myself. All right, see, me too. Two drums, two thighs. We need to do uh, some mac and cheese and some candy yams. It is a lot of food. You know, we did run into Charles, the owner, the man, the myth, the legend. Unfortunately, I didn't tell them we were coming and he was on his way out. So he said a word or two on camera. So we didn't get that big interview, but we're gonna, we're gonna pay them homage. We're gonna give them some respect by eating a ton of this on camera. Now, this isn't really the best food to eat outside. This isn't really street food. Yeah, it's not like a slice of pizza where you just take it, you fold it, and you just kind of walk and go. Like, the best part about like having fried chicken and soul food is the fact that you get to sit down and like really enjoy it and spend time with those that you care about. It's definitely not something that you're just eating out of a container. That, my friends, is what you call fried goodness. Evan insisted I go first. I have not had fried chicken in Harlem since we were at Amy Ruth's doing chicken and waffles. This is different. This is just a drumstick coming right out of the bucket. Perfect, let's try this. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm. It's just so crispy. I see exactly what Evan was saying about the pan-fried chicken, how you just get a better flavor out of it. And clearly, you know, Charles is a legend for a reason. Excellent. Just, just in one bite, I could tell how good this fried chicken is. Really happy Evan took me here. As usual, Evan, another good choice. Honestly, like this is just bringing me back some memories already just by smelling it. And... <laughs> oh yeah, this is perfectly done. Like, it's crispy, it's juicy, it's full of flavor. And like, even when I bite into it, like it's it literally brings me back to my childhood. Like I I can't think of a more perfect piece of chicken right now. It honestly tastes homemade to me. Like that's how I would describe it. It's like I feel like this is homemade. All right, this is Molly's cupcakes. This is where me and Adriana certainly meet in the middle. This is also one of my favorite shops in Greenwich Village. I've covered it a few times on the channel, but now Adriana's gonna tell you uh, a thousand reasons why she likes this place. I honestly love I, I was a big fan of peach cobbler and I ordered it for many years. Like, it was everything I ate every time I came here, but now I'm a big fan of blueberry cheesecake. I'm gonna either get the chocolate decadence or the cookies and cream. Tough decisions in life, huh? Sure, anything else? I can't describe how good this is. Seriously, I can't. It's perfect, it's soft, it's sweet, but not super sweet, it's crunchy. Ooh, I'm in love with this cupcake. It wouldn't be a cookie monster without a little cookie on top. This is what makes the cookie monster cupcake, folks. All right. Haven't had this one in a little while. It's like cookie goodness mixed with a cupcake. That's the best way to describe it. It's so soft, but the, the little chips, oh, it's just definitely one of the top cupcakes in New York City. Well, Russo's has, like it does, like the window says, has been in business since 1908. 
and they specialize in their homemade mozzarella which they make right on the premise in the basement every single day and it's amazing you know it's just like to taste that freshness you, you just can't be beat plus they make their own pasta Oh, you were right about the smell the second you walk in here. Look at all this pasta everywhere. Also, you know, they have a lot of imported goods because like you can really get everything you need here for a proper Italian meal. Oh, yeah. And all the different kinds of olives and like little salads like this, you know, their um, sun-dried tomato. They make all these themselves plus the prepared food because the neighborhood has changed, so now a lot of young people, they don't have time to cook. They want to come in and look, very reasonable price, cheese lasagna, $6.99. That's a good little hack there. I like that. I might cook for this. <laughs> and you made that fresh today. Every day here. Every day. Prosciutto del Papa. They really, 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 really are. We genuinely care about them and they care about us as well. You know, it's. I'm taking my first bite of the Italiano. I'm not going to finish this. I think we've got more food to come in the video, but I just wanted to show you guys what you'd get if you ordered their most famous sandwich. Look at all the mozzarella in here. This is ridiculous. I'm taking a big bite. Hmm. From the bread to the fresh mozzarella to the basil to the oil and vinegar this is just a perfect italian sandwich to get in new york city this may be one of the best italian sandwiches i have tried living in new york it's definitely like top two or three i mean you've got to come here just for that support local business and get an amazing lunch too thank you guys good choice good choice <laughs> L&B Spumoni Gardens, established 1939. New York City history right here. There's no place like L&B. You feel like, like you're at a block party. You guys, look at this. It's like, <laughs> it's like a movie scene here. It's a Brooklyn movie scene. Everyone's just outside enjoying themselves. And, I mean, it's Brooklyn, look. I've been here before. I had a great time. When it comes to the Sicilian, some people prefer the corner. Some people prefer the side slice. Some people don't want any crust. They want the full bang for your buck sauce cheese spread to the edge and that's when you get the middle slice corner slice please can i do a uh, middle looks good i was fast like 10 seconds antonio i think it's important for people to know that lmb is the godfather of the upside down slice they pioneered this style and everybody loves it because you're getting a lot of sauce there's two cheeses on it more flavor for it I love the spongy crust and the tomato sauce, like the flavor just jumps right out at you. A little bit sweet, pretty unique for New York City. You don't find this style of pizza too often. There's nothing like having an upside down Sicilian at the place that pioneered this style. The sauce is the standout when you come to LMB, absolutely. I've been here, John, I can't, I can't even count the times. This was my uncle's favorite spot. These places become a part of you, become part of your, your life in a, in a way that you'd never imagine. Huge groups are here. A lot of families have brought their kids. I love that about these Brooklyn pizza spots. So these are like generational destinations. Oh, yeah. What's like, your record for LMB in one sitting? Guys, look at me. I, five slices is nothing. <laughs> I can do five slices, but it's going <laughs> to knock me out for the rest of the day. That's going to be a really long nap after. I think a mom and a, and a grandma eating pizza in the front seat of their car. Like, does it get much more Brooklyn than that? Everyone's in a rush in New York City, guys. I mean, I myself have paper plates in my glove compartment. They say you can tell he's serious right here. This is probably my favorite stop in all of Dumbo, Jacques Torres. If you're into chocolate, this is the place for you. And on a cold winter's day, gotta try the hot chocolate. That's exactly what we're about to get. I don't know how you can come here and not buy five things. I wanna, I wanna buy the whole store right now. 
winner. Four bucks for a Valentine lollipop. This is the kind of place that makes you want to ruin dinner early. <laughs> New York chocolate blueberries. The gifts just keep on coming and coming every place we go to in Dumbo. This is my favorite store in Dumbo. Like, just put that on the record. 60% dark chocolate in this hot chocolate. Chocolate. No, we gotta do it again. I saw that coming. Okay. So rich and flavorful. This is the perfect way to end a trip to Dumbo. You know, take this, go walk alongside the Brooklyn Bridge. You know, one of the biggest food crazes I've seen in the city the last couple years are Korean corn dogs. Big time, thanks to TikTok. Thanks to TikTok. Yep. Not only do they have Korean corn dogs here, but they got K-pop albums as well. Now, this isn't my thing. Are you, do you know anything about K-pop, Ming? Actually, you know, I love the whole old school stuff, Big Bang. I don't think most Korean corn dog spots have K-pop. This is unique. Yeah. All right, number one, number four, number five, number 12. Yes. Break. <laughs> you guys went wild with the, the condiments, my god. This is a monster. <laughs> Alright, I've actually never tried this before. I'm I'm super excited. Ready? Big yeah. bite, John. Big bite. Big bite. Let's do it. Cheers. I'm working to that level. I'm working to that level. I never would have thought that powdered sugar on top of a corn dog would work as well as it's working right now, but somehow, amazing. Mm, crunchy, cheesy, spicy, savory, <laughs> sugary, all in one. She sounded like a commercial for this place, right? <laughs> I can understand why this got so popular on TikTok, just watching Ben with those cheese poles. This is actually a, a fun food to eat. There we go. I think it takes some skills. Let me do it. Skills I lack. Mm. I've never felt so left out in my entire life. <laughs> so disclaimer, I just realized that neither of them actually had hot dogs in their K-dogs. It was just cheese and I think sweet potato and cheese. Hence it was easier for the cheese pull. I don't feel as bad anymore. <laughs> so this is it. It looks like we're about to eat at somebody's house. <laughs> it does. Oh yeah, Xiaoqi. It's a Fujianese restaurant and we're in a Fujianese Chinese Chinatown neighborhood and we have to try out their cuisine. So let's go for it. Let's do this. Is anyone here? Yeah, someone's here. They're open, I think. We had to get their attention. Yeah. Hi, can we get the noodle with peanut sauce? Peanut noodle. Huh? Peanut noodle. Peanut noodle. we have here is a little carb overload. We've got the peanut sauce and we're just, it's, it's at the bottom, so we're mixing it together. Yeah, they must have dripped it in and all the sauce is at the bottom. So I've had the famous peanut noodles at Shuzhou Fuzhou Cuisine in Manhattan's Chinatown. I'm gonna be curious how these compare. You ready? Yeah, let's try it. Let's do it. Here we go. Got a big pull there. I know, too much. Look at that. Look at that. This is a Mikey Chen noodle pull here. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna take a big bite. It's really good. The one in Manhattan, I think it's got a stronger flavor, which I prefer personally, but I'm someone that likes a really sweet, flavory sauce. This is more understated. Yeah, this one is a little bit more light. But which one gives you more noodles? I don't know. I think these guys might give more noodles. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think anyone in my life has ever given me this much noodles, period. I think I need a nap after this, though. <laughs> it's carb overload. Oh my goodness, it is. Look at this. 
Economy Candy has been open since 1937. This is one of the city's most famous candy stores. They have a selection of goods that you really can't find in many other shops. We're gonna go inside and see exactly what we can find. We're trying to find something that would be actually like difficult to locate. Thinking, bulk candy. Gummy bears, sour gummy poppers. She said that her dentist is angry at her for working here. For life's boo-boos. Chocolate aid, milk chocolate band-aids. My Andy Codgers have your <laughs> Think of all the places on this video, if you have kids, this is the spot to come for sure. As an artist, I love this one. <laughs> I wanna know my misfortune. Could be funny. You never disappoint at letting people down. So this is a traditional Brazilian buffet. Uh, we have rice and beans, of course, a bunch of meat, <laughs> and also a great salad bar. But if you want to, if you feel like having a Brazilian churrasco, which is Brazilian barbecue, you can go to the back and they have an amazing churrasco spot. And it's $8.99 a pound if you want to include the churrasco, or $7.99 a pound for this buffet over here. Guys, I have to admit, they have some really healthy options here. It's not your typical buffet. They've got quinoa. They have salmon. That was the first thing that jumped out to me, how sweet potato, the healthy choices they have. But if you're anything like me, you're here for the Brazilian barbecue. And, and I saw this stuff hanging on skewers. Ooh, that's what I'm gonna be getting for sure. Top sirloin and skirt steak. This is what I'm most interested in. I've been to you know, Brazilian steakhouses, Brazilian all-you-can-eat places where they, they carve it right in front of you. So I like that touch here where you can go order whatever you want and just add it on to the price of your buffet. So let's try some top sirloin. Mm. Very tender, I like this a lot. Also, just the right amount of salt. I've had problems at steakhouses in the past where there's just too much salt on the meat. Not an issue here, but I really love this top sirloin. If you come here, this has got to be your pick. Mm. But I miss the Brazilian community so much, so I try to live as close as possible. So Sosto is a perfect mix for, you know, New York and Brazil. Why don't you show everyone your super healthy meal? Acai people, very popular in the world, but it's a Brazilian thing especially. So it's really good. They blend it with Guaraná. So. Speechless. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get food. <laughs> There's a lot going on here, guys. We'll explain outside. This is the Taiwanese taro ball shaved ice. This is incredible. For $5.50, you have 13 different ingredients. I mean, look at this thing. There's three, three different kinds of balls here. You have the purple one, which is the purple yam. You have the light white one, the light purple one, which is taro. And you have the orange one, which is sweet potato. And then you have pineapple in here, some, uh, some beans and some kidney beans and shaved ice at the bottom and the way you're supposed to eat this is you eat it from the top to the bottom so that way when you eat the ingredients at the top the ingredients have time to soak into the shaved ice at the bottom so guys I don't know what's cooler the fact that there's 13 different ingredients or the fact that we are on Doyer Street aka bloody angle and the intersection here has apparently had the most murders in US history due to gang activity in this region in the early 20th century. So a lot of history going on, but as Candace said, just start from the top. So I'm gonna take a few quick bites so we can mix the flavors a little bit. This isn't like any dessert I've ever had before. It's got a, a lot of different things going on. We've got the purple yam, we've got the sweet potato flavor, we've got the taro flavor. Dig in a bit. Even looks like a little corn. Yeah, they have corn in there too. Yeah, this is this isn't your typical American super sugary dessert. 
I feel like this actually has elements that could be kind of healthy, no? Yeah, and look, even the ice at the bottom is seeping in already. It's becoming a little ground. Yeah, and this is the best part, as he was saying. Look, look at the flavor just seeping in. For $5.50, by the way, this could easily serve two people. Maybe even be dessert for three people. Yeah, this is really incredible. It's hard to find like a Taiwanese place that sells it for this cheap. In fact, this is the only place I know in Chinatown that sells it. All right, so my goal here is to try to mix as many flavors as humanly possible into one crazy bite. I mean, we got pretty close. I, nobody saw that. That's where it's at. Mm -hmm. When you mix them all together, that is where it's at. Mm. So you have the proper Kenneth method. You eat it from the top, and you have my method. You just do whatever, uh, whatever serves you better. Thank you, Ross. Thank you. Thank you. We've got the masala dough, so we're gonna open it up and show you what's inside. Okay, so main ingredient, potatoes. We've also got onion, we've got mustard seeds. It's pretty basic. Again, very healthy, vegetarian. $4.50, not gonna break the bank. I also like about this place that it's mostly uh, local Indian people who come here, you know, they go to temple upstairs to worship, come downstairs, have a great meal waiting right for them. But of course, you don't just have to be Indian to come here. We can see non-Indians sitting here as well, a really inclusive environment. I'm, I'm pretty happy already, but let's try this. Now I've got all the ingredients in the middle. This is my favorite part of eating this style of food, just dipping everything in sauces. You know there's a big flavor explosion about to happen. Mm. Wow. It's such a nice combination, just getting that crunchiness of the dosa then the potato, the mustard seed, a little bit spicy, complemented well by the chutney. So delicious. Adriana's about to try the ghee roast. Look at, look at this cone. Look at this, guys. I'm breaking it apart. Oh, it, has, it has nothing inside. It's very, very, very tasty. Like, like butter. I love it. I love it. Mm. At least I wouldn't think that something like this with no filling inside would be as good as it is, but the ghee roast, Adriana just told me, so far it's her favorite thing. Mm. And it's just so buttery. Like, it's silky smooth when it goes in your mouth. Nice crunch, oh, absolutely amazing. I'm so impressed by this. And I feel bad messing up this little cone we had. It's like a work of art, isn't it? So guys, they surprised us. They just brought us like an, an extra dish, a raba dosa. It's cream of wheat with onion and green chili. They wanted to see how much we'd like it. Just going crazy here, guys. Guys, again, for me, this is my first time trying all of this food. Mmm. It's a little bit different, this wheat dosa. I feel like it absorbs the chutney and the sambar more. So I'm tasting a little bit more of the, of the sauces here. It's still very good. I love onions, so it's really good for me. So soft and crunchy at the same time. Hard to explain, but. All right, this is my favorite souvlaki in Yiro in New York City. They're called the King of Souvlaki. They started off here just as a humble little cart on this corner for in the 1970s, and they've grown into this huge truck. And they've actually had multiple trucks and have brick and mortar now in Brooklyn, so they've done very well. It's for good reason. The food is amazing here. All right, let's let's try this out. Half pork gyro, half pork souvlaki, please. Okay. Uh, lemon Yes, please. And paprika. I love the smoke that's coming out from the top of this truck right there. 
They are, they are really popular in this spot, and they're called the king for a reason. We got here, we have the pork gyro, pork souvlaki, half and half. That's the beauty of this truck, they'll do that for you. And it's the hand stacked variety of gyros, not that mystery meat. This is how they do it in Greece. I was just in Athens two months ago, I can attest to that. And they have the tzatziki with, made with real yogurt. It's not that white sauce with the mayo, it's just the real tzatziki sauce. And then you have the fries. What's special about these fries, they're fried in extra virgin olive oil, they're amazing. You know, don't count the calories, just get the fries. <laughs> I, I don't eat Greek food that often, which is a shame. We're in Astoria, so you know we're gonna be trying this. So I'm putting the gyro right now into the sauce. Here we go. Mm. Oh man. That is so tender. That might be some of the most tender, juiciest street meat I've ever had before. Like, unbelievable. So Vlaki, they marinate it for a while. That's why it soaks up a lot of flavor. So let's take a bite. Mm. It's so juicy, it's so tender. Mm. My name is Frank Russo. I am the district manager for Tompkins Square Bagels. We have about 33 to 40 different spreads. We created a lot of these just from trends, comments, people wanted different things and we came up with our own recipes. All the cream cheeses here are made in house. My men aren't uh, deli guys, they're food stylists. They're, they're sandwich artists. They, they just don't make it, they create it. One of our classic favorites, it's the French toast bagel with birthday cake cream cheese. Now the birthday cake cream cheese is basically like a sweet cream with uh, funfetti sprinkles. Plain bagel with walnut raisin cream cheese, chocolate chip cookie dough, oh, and a French toast bagel. Mm. Desserty, that would be the first words mm -hmm. that come to mind. Like serve this at a party afterwards, I don't know. Even for breakfast, if you're looking for something sweeter, yeah. the birthday cake cream cheese, it's sweet, but it's not like overly sugary. Yeah. Literally tastes like I'm just taking little pieces of a birthday cake. You're taking off the layer, the cream. And this uh, French toast bagel, I know he said it was brioche. I really taste that. I taste a bit of the cinnamon in here. Um, so it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool riff on like a French toast breakfast, but in bagel form. The bagel itself is quite uh, billowy, soft. I really like it. I think it pairs really nice with the sweet cream cheese. I'll tell you, it's probably the first sweet bagel cream cheese combo I've ever tasted that I enjoyed. What's wild to me is comparing this to Absolute Bagels, like almost old school as they come, and then they have these flavors here and these cream cheeses. Do you think that people's tastes are beginning to change? I mean, I think it's in general, I think people are getting more creative with uh, you know, like sandwiches. You have these places that do crazy, customizable, like hockey way. Yeah, you think exactly. That, like, I think now it's just kind of like very creative, even with pizza. Like a lot of foods are getting much more creative. I think just people are more adventurous, more willing to step out of their comfort zones when it comes to traditional foods. And I think Tompkins Square was the first one to do the French toast bagel. And this was before Instagram. This is before TikTok. This is before these things really blew up. Up, who would you tell to come here? Uh, someone who loves dessert. I mean, we haven't really tried the savory. We ate a lot of savory today, but if you want to try something really unique and really like sweets, I would say come here. If you want to go to like a pastry store, you want to kind of, you want to try a bagel, but you want to get a little sweetness to it, come here. Suppose if you're visiting New York City, high chance you're in the East Village at some point. Yeah. And maybe one person in your group likes really sweet stuff. You can still get all the classics here. They even have a Jersey bagel, Taylor ham and cheese. They have everything here. I really like the bagel itself. This French toast bagel is really unique. I haven't heard of this before here. I uh, really like the flavor. It's a little subtle cinnamon in there. It's an eggy flavor. Yes, this is where you get your habichuela con dulce, which is sweet red beans. Uh, this lady is famous, so as you see, there's always a line here because um, it's really good. I like it. I don't know why I like it, but I like it. And I like these little crackers. And you said there's the little beans in there as well. Just super sugary. You said people either love or hate this, right? Put me in the love category. I was so impressed how simple this pie was to make, how quick it was to make, and I've had Neapolitan pizza before in New York City. I've never had it in Naples before, so I guess I'm not the best judge, but uh, let's take a bite. 
I'm folding it. Now, Mary Jane said some people do fold it in Italy, so I'm not the only person in the world to do this for a Neapolitan slice. I'm not using a fork and knife. Mm -hmm. This is delicious. Like, I, I think I could eat this whole thing in five minutes. This is just unbelievably good. This may be the, the softest crust I've ever tried in my entire life. I'm serious. Let's try it, guys. I'm very curious, actually, because I've tried several pizzas in New York, but I've never tried an authentic Italian place, which this claims to be. So let's try it. And as you can see, I'm gonna use fork and knife. <laughs> You're a lot more civilized than I am. No, it's not that. It's just that many many people in Italy use uh, just their hands to eat pizza. It's just that the first part, it's a bit more messy to eat just with your hands. That's why I use first fork and knife. And then I will switch with my to my hands, you will see. Finally. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> so many people ask me what's the difference between Italian pizza and New York City pizza. And there are obviously many things to mention, but the one difference that for me is most important is the mozzarella. Because you see how this mozzarella looks like? This is fresh mozzarella. We call it also fior di latte in Italian. Whereas the New York City slice doesn't use this kind of mozzarella, it uses a low, low moisture mozzarella. Uh, so this mozzarella is usually uh, round, it's shaped like a, a small ball, <laughs> so to say. I'm really impressed by this one. Um, this in particular, uh, they import from Agerola, which is a place right near Naples in the um, peninsula of Sorrento. And I must say, it really tastes like authentic Italian, Neapolitan or mozzarella. Rice, 450 with two veggie items. Tal, first impressions? It just smells amazing. I'm overwhelmed. I'm, I'm just excited <laughs> to get food in my mouth. Look at, look at all the options here. It's just lined up for you. So you just pick your sides. It's so cool. Look at all these people that have been here. A lot of smiling faces, including this guy's a famous YouTuber, right? No, oh, this guy, this guy too. He's a famous YouTuber He's too, right? He's even more famous YouTuber. <laughs> so 450, we've got lentils on one side. We've got the rice, like deep underneath here. And we've got the yogurt curry. I'm expecting a very flavorful first bite. Here we go, we're trying the, the lentils. Mm. The lentils have like just the right amount of spice for somebody like me who enjoys Indian food but doesn't want it super, super hot. It's got flavor, it's got a little bit of a kick to it. I'm more excited to try the yogurt curry though. We got the rice buried underneath. I'm gonna try to get some, I'm gonna try to get some rice with the yogurt curry. Poopy said that this was a very good choice, so kind of winked. You ready, guys? Mm. Wow. It tastes like the, the yogurt flavor. It's got good spices. A little bit hot. A little bit hot. Look at all the ingredients mixed in here. I'm not an Indian food expert by any means, but I will say that for 450. You could do a lot worse. This is easy, an easy lunch for me for under $5, like, no question. You could you know, take it to go, enjoy it in the park. Hmm. And it's healthy and vegetarian, so there's so many good things going on here. I just feel like while we're eating, we're like dodging cab drivers coming to <laughs> get stuff. And it's been an interesting food experience, one of the most random things I've done in a long time. Because one thing, about the food here, we make it daily, okay. but also we say prayer. You have to, do, if you're gonna do the way the ancestors did it, oh, yeah. then the ancestors commune to the gods. So cooking was their love. When the people sat down to eat, they wanted them to really enjoy it, really feel like they are back home, really 
have a moment of peace and tranquility. Talk about the chicken and waffles. Why, why do you think it's your most famous dish? Well, one, because um, we season the chicken like 24 hours in advance, let it sit in this special seasoning. Same thing with the you're waffles. You're not gonna give us a secret on that, are you? No. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that would be foolish. It's like three or four seasoning, but it would be foolish. Right here, you got your collard greens, you got your baked mac and cheese, you got your candy yams, and you got your black eyed peas. Here we go. All cheers. Right. Cheers. Collard green cheers. Mmm. There's so much flavor. That's just the first thing that came to my mind. Oh, yeah. Perfectly good. Like, you can even see like the bits of meat that are in here. Unfortunately, it's not vegan or vegetarian, but it's pretty darn good. Mm. It's such a perfect combination, Evan. Like, whoever would have thought combining a chicken waffle in one would be so good, but they, they try to complement each other really well. You know, that's why Jesus exists. Sometimes you just gotta go ahead and you know put things together that work. You know. All right, members of Mario, this is for you. Ooh. Big bite. Like you can even put that in the words. Like it's just like it's so melty in your mouth, like. It's like eating a clap. Like, there's no other way to describe this. Like, it is literally the best waffle I've had, and trust me, I eat a lot. I figured we'd start at Los Tacos number one. We've been to the one in Times Square before. We've rated it the best taco yeah. in New York City. Let's see how Chelsea Market does. What do you think? I'm really excited, guys, and I'll let you know if it's worth it or no. If it's as good as the one in Times Square, I'm definitely in. Vamos, let's go. It smells amazing. As you're walking through Chelsea Market, you can smell the taco. We've got our taco. We're going to go eat it now in the little back room area that a lot of people don't even know exists. It's very cool. Follow me. is a tortilla because they don't taste the same and they have this strong flavor and these tortillas have just this perfect flavor like they are just perfect she's trying to pepper no i don't i'm mexican and i don't do that well she's like what that's not bad <laughs> i mean it's not bad it's, it's not it's spicy, spicy for me <laughs> i think it's spicy it's really, bad, it's really good the corn tortilla is amazing Can't this. You've been to Malaysia before, so this is gonna be like a, a repeat for you, right? I remember it was good. That's all I remember. That's the most important thing to remember for sure. All right, so first up for the taste test is going to be nasi lemak, and nasi means rice. This is a, a staple dish in Malaysia. I really like the sauce though. It's just the right amount of spice for me. I'm not someone that loves super spicy food. Mm. There it is right there, wow. This is really, really, really good. My first few bites of Malaysian food, great and fun. You mix some of the, the rice into it. My friend who recommended this restaurant, Joe Stefano, thank you, good call. Are those like little fishes? Where? This, I think that's fish. I think it is, yeah. Alright, let's try this. Yeah, it's a little spicy. It reminds me a bit of Indian food. Okay. You know, which is logical since geographically it's not that far. Yeah, it's more Indian than anything else I would say. Okay. But really tasty, yeah. Super rich sauce. Super rich. We took you back to Malaysia, sort of in Queens. How was the overall experience? It was delicious. Like in Malaysia, you're always kind of suspicious of the thing you eat because you don't know what it is and you ordered it like in Malaysian. But here, like when you actually feel safe, you can enjoy it. So yeah, definitely try Malaysian food. It's really different than any other Asian food actually. 
I used to work in the hospital. Work in the hospital for like 18 years. They hang out here every day. A friend of mine used to own a store before. So when he decided that he didn't want to do it anymore, me and a very close friend of mine, Jeff, we don't want the space to go to waste. So we both just came together, keep the American Deli, but just a little fusion on it. Lived in that store all his life. I grew up in Jamaica. So we just blended the two and you know, the Notable was born. What, what's the impact been of social media in bringing you a lot of business? Listen, man, hungry artists. Johnny Eats, I'm no lie, it's probably a 50% jump in business since Johnny and Justin came. People came from Boston, everybody comes from Long Island, Brooklyn, the whole New York City come been here to support us. It's been pretty good. For the Jamaica me crazy. I think that KFC in Jamaica have the best chicken and the best coleslaw. Thousand Island dressing has that sweet taste and the coleslaw has that sweet taste. So we just put coleslaw and the jerk chicken together. So, you know, you have the sweet and a little bit of spicy with the jerk chicken. Look, at, look how much meat is in here. It's on that cocoa bread. The cocoa bread is very soft, but it's been pressed down on a panini press. It's got those marks on top. Oof. Jerk chicken, legitimately one of my most favorite things to eat in the world. Let's give it a shot. How are we doing, brother? Mmm, chicken is very smoky and it's got that jerk sauce on top. I love that cocoa bread though, it's just so soft and spongy. You mix that all together, get those little crunchy peppers in there. Got a nice bit of heat in here, I love it. Also important to note, we are standing outside of Notable. No table. No tables here, we're standing and eating. Good eats, no seats. And you were telling me that not so easy to find Jamaican food in Astoria, right? Nearly impossible until this spot opened up. The versus you know, Astoria, Jackson Heights area is, we did not really have West Indian food, but now there's a Jamaican spot right here in Astoria. Definitely be back. Seventh Street Burger, you've heard all the hype. What are your first impressions? I mean, this is basically a hole in the wall right here. And they make decision making really simple because their menu barely has any choices. Cheeseburger, double, impossible, fries, Coke, that's it. Keep it simple, three cheeseburgers. They bring you the burgers outside. We are sitting under heat lamps. It's about 40 degrees right now. This is nice. I'm gonna let you get yours first. This thing is greasy and <laughs> sloppy. Look at this, the patty is bigger than the bun. Like one and a half times the size of the bun here. All their burgers are served with grilled onions, American cheese pickles, and their house sauce and a griddle toasted Martin potato bun. Also notice the crisp edges of the patty here. One of New York's hottest burgers right now, 7th Street. Let's try it. Not quite a White Castle slider, not quite a Shack burger, but perfectly in between. And the first thing that hit me was the onions. Caramelized onions on top. What hit me at first is the sauce. This is kind of like a Big Mac sauce. And this thing is amazing. The sauce is really what makes it. I love how thin the beef is and just satisfying overall. I love the simplicity of this. You know exactly what you're getting. No lettuce, no tomato, just plenty of grease, plenty of burger here. No frills. No frills. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, the sauce brings it all together. That, that and the onions, it would be perfect to me if the onions were just a little bit more caramelized, a little bit more, but other than that, it's a good fast food burger, I have to say. Yeah, this thing, six and a half bucks. I mean, great price, great value too. You know, I've eaten at all the, the city chains. A lot of people say that Shake Shack is overrated. I am a Shake Shack fan. I do not think 7th Street Burger is overrated. I think I'm jumping on the hype train. They got one of these in Brooklyn I'm gonna be hitting up near me now. It ain't pretty, but it works. Yep. So the people brought over what they knew how to do. They knew how to make pickles. It was an inexpensive item. And uh, it felt like home cooking. The home food snack. At that time, it was a nickel for a pickle. New pickle. See how green it is? Right, so that's kind of like the like closest it can be to a cucumber. Yes, it's only been pickled for one to 10 days. Wow. And after two weeks, It turns to a half sour pickle. You see how the color changes? It goes sort of yellow. Right. And then the other pickle we saw, the sour pickles, those are three months old. And those are the most garlic and the most dill flavor. So we're going with the classic. We've been doing classics all day. Sour pickle, super sour, right? Full sour, this is. Full sour. Three weeks curing. Three weeks for this. Ooh. Okay, let's, let's do it. Mmm.
so much pickle juice, I would say, in it. Definitely so sour. So juicy, so sour. And you, you like, you heard that snap too when I bit into it, right? It's super crisp, like extra fresh, good. Really crunchy. Oh yeah. Yes. This is actually a very popular stop on the Jewish food tours. They have some on the Lower East Side. I took one a long time ago. I have been here before. I think the owner is a character. Definitely stop by this place. Yeah, like you said, it was five cents a pickle. Hey, hey, no, no, Hudson loves pickles too. And now only a dollar a pickle. So it's still a very affordable food. He said a pickle for a nickel. A pickle for a nickel, that's it. Oh, Hudson, Hudson, ready, catch. All right. And, uh, two amount of balance. Like Christmas came early with these colors. I'm very, very excited for this. We're at an, a fine dining Italian establishment outside. You don't usually see these kind of tablecloths on the street. I kind of like it. This place is so good that DoorDash delivery drivers will eat it first inside, then bring you your pie, okay? It's a good signal. Look how puffy this cornicione is on the edge. This one is uh, vodka sauce, pesto, and chicken cutlet. You know, I don't usually do chicken pizza, but I'll make exceptions. It's a very sturdy slice, it's like zero flaw, considering how many ingredients we've got on it too. Let's give us a go. Mm. Mm. That pesto just balances everything out. Pesto and vodka sauce, nice combination here. I like how thick it is on top too. You know, sometimes it should be like a little bit of a drizzle. It's a really thick pesto. Yeah. But I'll even tell you that the chicken cutlet is well seasoned and marinated as well. It's not just an afterthought here. I think you could put a lot of these ingredients in a sandwich. It'll be fantastic too. Same wavelength. Like <laughs> yeah. What can't you do with a good chicken cutlet? I bet you he would make great bread. Like how skilled he is at making this yeah. dough. I bet you he would make a great sandwich bread. The dough is so well made and fermented that you don't feel so heavy in your stomach. That's the thing about all these new school shops is that way. This has been one of my favorite slices of the day, I gotta tell you right here. You know what it reminds me of? Similar new school vibe, Lucia's Avenue X in Brooklyn. Old school inspiration, new school technique, and kind of elevated fermentation, dough ingredients. I agree with you there. Check that out in our Brooklyn Pizza Guide. Did a really good video last year, including Lucia's. I think New Yorkers are getting pickier about pizza as well. I can't just open up a dollar shop and expect people to show up now. When you have pizza like this in New York, I don't even want to waste my stomach space on dollar slices, I'll tell you. It's funny because most of the native New Yorkers I meet, they want nothing to do with dollar pizza. I get it, trust me. You know why? Because old school good pizza like we had like at Amore, for example, that used to be a dollar for a slice back in the 90s. You're right. I don't, if only still was, right? But. Jersey boy here. We're sitting outside of Satriali's here in the Sopranos, all right? Kind of reminds me of that, because like with the, uh, the tablecloths, it's kind of like a chilly uh, fall day, you know? Kind of brings you that vibe. <laughs> it was a little cloudy out. The tortas Nessa. And what's interesting here is that every torta is named after a different Mexican football team. Uh, so the torta pumas is what we're going to get. It's got all these different ingredients. Breaded chicken, jamon, uh, head cheese, chorizo, egg, cheese, sausage. Tons. Guys, what, what have we done here? I don't know what we've done here. <laughs> They're expecting me to eat all this by myself. I'm kinda, guys, I'm kind of skinny for a reason. I can't eat this much. So. <laughs> I can't even get my mouth around it. I just gotta start from the side. It's amazing. The first thing, the first flavor I noticed was the salchicha, the hot dog. Got a little kick to it on top of the omelet and the bread was just grilled over this monstrosity. This is really good. And I don't even know if I could finish a quarter. This is just a quarter of the sandwich with all this meat sticking out. This is, this is an insider's pick. Greg and Jimmy, wow. Good call here. The hot dog is a really strong flavor. It all works so well together. I'm not a big hot dog fan personally, but in here it works. Everything melts so well together and the bread is excellent. This spot is known for their teas, it's by their name. On Prince Street, the original location. This restaurant is absolutely beautiful. The interior, it feels like you're having tea with the British royal family. Darjeeling Margaret's Hope Black Tea. It is so refreshing and it's great for such a heavy meal that we've eaten before. It really cleanses our palate. Dessert here is so good. 
you could spend an entire year wandering here and not even hit every single restaurant. It's just a truly uh, overwhelming neighborhood in the best possible way. It really is. And I've lived in Queens my whole life. I still haven't experienced all these restaurants in Flushing. Only just recommendations and then I'll go pop in. But there's so much more to explore here. Let's try this tiramisu now. Flushing is the foodies heaven of- It really is. Of East Asian food, I have to say. Oh. And, <laughs> and I just ruined it. Okay. Oh, wow. It has that really, really strong, like, chocolatey flavor on the top. Food coma coming up, guys. All right. So simple. It's so New York. We heard you were the best hot dog cart in New York. You seem very popular around here. I'm, I'm yeah. seeing the line. I'm gonna send people to you. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I have so many customers, I can't even handle it. The thing you can do is just put over here, help who want and no experience necessary. Okay. To train at the spot. Deal. Okay. We're about to eat hot dogs on a bench next to Central Park. Does it get much more New York than that? I'm so excited. That was my dream when I came here. Was it? It's one of those things that as a tourist you want to do because you see it in the movies. This looks fantastic. Look at this thing. This is the OG street food of New York City, if you think about it. Before halal, before anything else, hot dog. Ready? Let's go. Let's try it. Mmm. I think of a hot dog experience in New York City. I'm thinking of this right here. Like, nice snap to the dog when you take that bite. Onion sauce adds another layer to the flavor. I think this is what you go for. This is what all the reviews said to get, is the onion sauce. What, what about you? How are you feeling? Simple, but perfect. You don't need much. You like the bone, great sausage, and the fantastic onion sauce. I almost never see long lines at hot dog stands in New York. We even saw Billy running to a car. Somebody just pulled up, ordered a hot dog. That's how much of like a neighborhood celebrity this guy is. I saw people running over real quick. Everyone has a chat with the guy. We even had like, fun, like holiday cars from families. Probably around the area. That's so cool. Having that neighborhood guy, be it a hot dog, be it coffee, be it anything, where like he knows what you want and he's got absolutely no attention. He could be the first ones to ever film him as far as I know. Only locals know about it, I think. I think if a tourist walks by, they're gonna think it's just one more vendor. Thank you, it was, it was, that was honestly one of the best hot dogs I've had in my entire life. It was so good. Really popular cart. They actually have two locations on this block. And this block has five different carts selling similar dishes from Bangladesh. Fushka Alley here, and rename yeah, the street. We're gonna rename the street, yeah. Thank you. All right, let's go eat it. Let's go eat. Now, I've done the fushka thing so many times with you and others, but this is my first time eating bell curry. We got two things I've never tried before. Let's go through them. Yeah, bell curry is very interesting. It's very thin, fried on the bottom. There's uh, chickpea spread on top. There's tamarind sauce. There's cucumber, a little bit of cilantro, chopped red onion. Now, not every card here sells this either. I'm only saying this because my wife is from Mexico, but it looks a little bit like a like a tostada, like a Bengali tostada. Yeah. So let's do this. A lot of the seasonings and flavors that I'm used to from the fushka, but a completely different surface. Just that crunchy surface of this, of the bell puri, is just phenomenal. It reminds me a lot, flavor-wise, of doubles, except it's not in a sandwich form, and that it's uh, more like open face and crispy, because you do have the chickpeas, the tamarind, and the cucumber in there. Very similar taste. I'm telling you, the Bengalis know how to do flavor. Like, it's just right. There's so much of it, it all works very well together. Just a textural masterpiece, too. You have sweet, sour, spicy. You have crunch from multiple things, not just the shell, but also the cucumber. And you finish that in like 20 seconds? I could have finished it even faster than that. <laughs> I don't know if I can think of a much better value for 13 bucks in New York than two foods we got right here on the street. Vegetarian as well. Everything they serve here is vegetarian. Well, we kind of alluded to it before, but Bangladesh Street, did they add that recently? Yeah, that's pretty recent. This block has so many Bangladeshi businesses, like culminating on this block with all these Bangladeshi street food carts. Lately on weekends, you're starting to see people who aren't necessarily locals at Jackson Heights coming and doing doing these little informal food tours, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been seeing um, more people slowly. I mean, this is not really a heavily touristed area, but people are slowly starting to realize uh, all the great food we have here in Queens, especially Jackson Heights. I don't know, it's taking them so long, but yeah. It kind of looks like you're eating inside of some cottage upstate. This feels like you could take a date here. This gives me that vibe. It's like we're going to a nice steakhouse. So what we're gonna do is dip it a little, shake it out. Put it back on the plate, take the roll, 
Gotta just dip the meat only, some gravy on the side. And then double dip. Just dip the bottom of the bowl a little quick. Dip. Double dip. Dip the meat. Don't rinse it out. Leave it on top. Take the roll. Dip it. And then you pour just a little bit of gravy on it and make it a double dip. So the KFJ style, this is on, it comes on two comes on two plates. As you can see. We dip the roll again. Put it on the plate. Dip the meat. Throw it right on. Now you can see a lot of gravy sitting on the plate. On the top. Now we got a KFJ style. A little more gravy. Okay, this is the double dip. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. I love everything about this place so far. I like the waiters are really friendly and they're so knowledgeable about the food and the way they're dressed. It's like we're having a nice steak dinner, but instead we're about to feast on hot roast beef sandwiches. This is dripping right now. This is, this is something. I have like a, a pool of probably the most delicious broth on earth right now here. just melts in your mouth, wow. The bread is so moist and soaked and you take that bite and you get all of that freshness and the juiciness. This is a once in a generation kind of place. The menu here really doesn't change that often and this is just a, a classic spot to come to if you're in South Brooklyn. A lot of regular customers that come back for me, I pretty much know their orders. I don't even have to ask what they're gonna have. If they decide they're gonna change it up on me, I tell them I'm not gonna serve them anymore. <laughs> I can't believe it took me 10 years living in New York City to finally try some of these hot roast beef sandwiches, but it was worth the wait. Hmm. And they are well known for their beef steam momos. And in Jackson Heights, they have a momo call every year. Yes. So they won the best momo in 2015 for good reason. That looks like an amazing trophy. I want to win this. Five dollars for a Tibetan momo. It's a dumpling. Great price. You get eight of these. Greg insisted a little hot sauce. First bite of the night. Hope it's a good one. If we had an instant replay, some of the broth actually came out, so be careful when you bite into a Momo, but it's really good. The beef is just so juicy, surrounded by all that broth. Definitely the best Momo I've had so far in my life. I have honestly not had too many Momos, and I know there's a ton in this neighborhood, but this is now my go-to Momo spot. I only know if something is good or it's not. <laughs> this is really good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I doused this momo here in the hot sauce. They call it seeping. So this is great. This momo has a little bit of broth in it, so it's kind of like a shalom bao, but not as soupy. I love it. It's very simple, really tasty. Let's take a bite. Mm. Oh yeah. It's got that kick. I like to do one biter on that one. Where do you get a good pastrami sandwich? I always point them as Sarge's over Katz's for a more local experience. I love this spot. Want to do the number three corned beef and pastrami? Always get that, like every time. <laughs> and a dark brown celery. Many people say just get a pastrami. I like to mix up the two when I come to Sarge's. So we have rye bread on top of coleslaw Russian dressing. Then we have some of the fatter pastrami on top of the leaner corned beef. So this is the, the ultimate Jewish deli sandwich in New York City right here. You're probably gonna need a fork and knife. I'm gonna attempt to get at least a few bites where this thing topples over. Mm. It's so rich, so tender in flavor. If you just want double meat experience combined with that rye bread and the Russian dressing, one of my favorite sandwiches in all of New York City. And honestly, something that I would say New York does better than any place else in the world, the deli sandwich. You can argue pizza, you can argue bagels, you can argue hot dogs. Anthony Bourdain said it many times. This is what New York does better than anybody. And I think Sarge's does it better than the rest. My personal opinion, 
New Yorkers will fight you to the death on who their favorites are, but I'll tell you, I don't see a single tourist in here. I've had many of you out there call me out for not ordering Doc Brown's celery soda. I've actually never had celery soda. Oh, that's really good. I approve this pairing, but bring your appetite when you come here. Sargis is interesting because for years and years they were open 24 hours, but after the pandemic, like many businesses, they do now close at 10 p.m. So you can't come here at three o'clock in the morning and and try to fight a hangover with a big pastrami sandwich anymore. No shame using a fork and knife. If you want to get your money's worth here, no shame.